Bobby Rose Beef here, Jigs and Friggin' Bigs. We got a great show lined up for you. All kinds of fishy shit's been going on with all three of us. I say all three of us because it's not myself and who the fuck is Joe Brown, but it's also Zach from Dark Horse Tackle joining us, the one and only Metal Jones. So we got a great conversation to have. We're going to be talking about things coming up this fall that you're going to want to know about, both tournaments and just gatherings and all kinds of events. Uh, We have a couple of good, good topics to discuss, specifically in our Gear of the Week segment and in Just the Tip. Yeah, your boy put his money where his mouth is, and uh, and it worked out. So we're going to talk about that, and I've got some stories about some just ridiculous kind of bullshit that's gone on on the water this week. Guys, you don't want to miss it. Go ahead and grab yourself something delicious to enjoy. More Jigs and Bigs coming up just for you right after the break. Don't go too far. Let's go. I'm, I'm stoked. This is going to be a great show. I've been looking forward to recording all day today. I've been working hard on my honey-do list all day, getting all the things checked off so I can take Labor Day tomorrow and fish all day long and just go straight to trivia. That's my plan. How are you boys doing today? Man, I am awesome. Yeah. Great week of fishing. It was good. I get to, I get to sit here and chat with two of my favorite dudes on the planet like... What else could I ask for? It's a beautiful Hell thing. yeah, man. I love it. I just learned on the way home I have tomorrow off. Oh, that's dope. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. So where are you fishing? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of whoring yeah. around right now. There's nothing um, wrong with whoring around. Dude. Yeah, you well, got, yeah. I'm, I'm, we'll see. What I need is I need somebody with a truck because oh. I want to do a float on a river. There you I've go. got a few people in mind. Yep. So Where's, I've, you don't have your you truck know. right now? You need I, two. No, I have a truck. You need two. Yeah. Oh. oh okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Saying or that, somebody yeah. that's like Josh that says crazy, willing to let us double stack kayaks on top of his not truck. That because we've done that before. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm telling you, all you need is a trailer hitch and mm. a U-Haul that's nearby, and you're good to go. Yeah. You know, nineteen to bucks. double stack. The double stack was pretty cool. The double stack's pretty fucking sweet. It really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you can't remember that actually picture. stack really well. Yeah. I was very surprised. Yeah. They stack really well. I didn't I was kind of worried, but Yeah. No, they, they, they we, were we, Yeah. We did we did well. Yeah, you want to take some precautions, make sure each one is independently strapped down and clear, you know. No. no, you just like, one strap goes over that middle one. Yeah. You hit the brakes hard enough, that little one becomes a fucking projectile. Well, now to they be actually fair, don't even strap them down. <laughs> we just we, one of them reach out the window like this and hold them. Yeah, that's always a fucking good idea. You got to. We coordinate. don't strap them down, but we strap them on. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> It's going to be that kind of float, ain't it? Mm. Nice. Now, they got uh, the scuffer holes in, in Sholies are like like, like t- almost two inches in diameter. Mm-hmm. So we oh. just dropped them through the scuffer holes. That'll that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, keep them nice and lined up. They won't move at all. That's great. Nice, dude. Um, so let's let's go. actually, before we talk about our weeks and our fishy shit, let's get yeah. some shit out there. Because the jig heads got to know. We got a couple of jig heads that are in here right now. Jig heads, if uh, you have seen this post in the Jigs and Bigs Patreon, go ahead and let us know if you've seen it. I think I've checked the analytics on it. I think there's only like 14 users that have checked it out. So here's the deal, guys. Um, so our good friend, St. Nick, Nick DeShane, up in Canada, right? Nick and I have been planning this little get together with some folks and it's gotten kind of late in and we've got a bunch of open spots. So I said to Nick, I would love to be able to offer some spots to the jig heads because this is all going on at Cayuga, upstate New York. It's central to a lot of folks that are on the East Coast able to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's worth doing, especially in October, man. Weather is going to be beautiful. It's going to be cool enough to make camping really enjoyable. Um, The bugs maybe turn the fuck off. Uh, for a little while that could be cool but we've got beds in cottages that are available Uh, we also have campsites that are available both if you need hookups or not all kinds of stuff but all that information is in patreon i put it on there 
to invite the jig heads to check it out. Now, Boats and Scroats is like a side quest of that Saturday's um well on the on the twelfth. The, that's the proper day of the Jigs and Big Slot Limit tournament. Now that is live right now on uh Fishing Chaos. You guys can go mm-hmm. ahead and check that out. In fact, I put a link up in last week's episode. All that stuff's going to be the same. I'm going to put those links in our uh, description of this podcast as well. So if you missed it last week and you're just like, I don't want to go all the way back and look for it, you can check it out here. But love to get. I would love to see over a hundred anglers this time. It's it's a fundraiser for crying out loud. This should be doable. You know, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> I would yeah, go for it, man. Absolutely. I'm just curious. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off before I check and see how many folks have registered. But it's gonna be hey, a good time. Okay. Can I can I can I do something, Bobby? Can mm-hmm. I do a little something? The floor um, is yours. So I think that uh, anytime that uh, Josh or myself is on jigs and bakes, while we were on jigs and bakes, so for the entirety of the show, yep. Any jig head. I don't know how we're going to do this. You know what? I, I kind of want to make it for jig heads. Yep. Specifically, but if you guys make a purchase on Dark Horse Tackle, I'll send you a gift card for 20% of your purchase. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, that's beautiful, man. So, yeah, you heard. I don't know how we're going to work it out, but yep. I, I will do It's starting right now. Starting right now. Yeah. Well, so. Joe inspired me with his purchase. The only way that. It'd have to be a code or something, huh? That like, sounds like a pain in the ass. Um, you know so, what? So you know what? It, I it, guess we could just make it for anybody listening. Why don't you? Oh shit! Oh no, it's live. Only yeah. jig heads it is. can it's listen only to it jig live. Heads. Yeah, it's only jig so that, heads it, right that here, just so. works. Yeah, it works perfect. Like this that is going to be in the show, but if you want to hit me with an affiliate link, I'll throw it in the comments and then I'll throw it on the Patreon so okay. they get a heads up. Yeah, hit me with an affiliate link. We'll go ahead and do yeah, that. I think you have one, but I'll, I do. I'll, I do. I'll, I have I'll, one. I can yeah, use. Yeah, I can so, definitely use mine if you want me to do so that. Just so you guys know, like, like just just to throw numbers out there, if you spend a hundred bucks. I send you a gift card for 20. That's pretty slick. Okay. That's pretty so, slick. If you, if you, if you spend 10 bucks, I'll send you a gift card for two. I don't really care. Do whatever you want. I fucking mm. love that shit. I can get down mm. with that. Mm. Anytime that myself or Josh or both of us, God help you all are on the show. We'll do that. I think that's fucking, that's a thing of beauty right there. I'm going to go ahead and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put a minute since we got Josh on here. We need to, we need to get both of you guys on the here. recluse. I'll put this yeah. link right here in the chat. So if you guys want to check it out, boom, you go ahead. Copy. And you want to hear something? Right you want to hear something crazy? Do you know where Josh is right now? Josh is 15 Vegas. minutes to the east of me. Really? Yep. No shit. Hmm. Why? Why? Is, yep. Huh? Work, work. Can you believe that he show. has the audacity to come to Pittsburgh and not come to my house? That's what I'm saying. Oh, God. Now he's he's visiting a friend of his that lives oh, out here. Very nice. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. I guess a better friend than me. Oh, huh? Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he doesn't seem upset about it at all. No, well, you know, there is like uh there's a lot of like hooking to do and 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 stuff, so you know, I guess that could be a good reason to stay 15 minutes to the east of, of me. There you go. There you go. To the east. Wow. Wow. He's that much closer to where we are. Hey, if he if he wants Sean's to come fired. up to, if he wants to come up to Massachusetts, we'll get him another edible. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah do man. that. Oh man. Uh, Joe, 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 as long as Joe's cool with having a guest at his house. Yeah, well, you guys are always invited. He was just like Bobby. He was just like there, and then he wasn't. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> this is the most Irish of Irish goodbyes that have oh, ever been. Oh, dude, their occurred. goodbye in the morning was the best Irish goodbye it's ever. Amazing. It's the only it's the only Irish goodbye that actually like made me sad a little bit. Oh, right? Oh. <laughs> I, I've said this story a thousand times. I'm like, all right, sweet. I'll get up early. I'll, I'll make these guys breakfast before they hit the road. Oh, no. They had other plans. They Fire were already halfway Blackstone, to fucking, fucking PA. Yeah. Were like, <laughs> we, got, we got to get away from the fucking ocean, man. This is fucked up. These people are weird. <laughs> No, nah, man, I had to get make money. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, man. Oh, I can fucking understand that. So 
We got some shit going on. This has been a kind of a wild week. It started out as for, for fishy shit for me, kind of slow. Sounds like for Joe it was kind of similar. Zach, how was your week for fishy shit? Did you get out and do anything? You get anything um, happening? No. No. Uh, besides besides um, battling with our new CFO oh. um, and, and uh, hook and baits and... Getting stickers printed, designing brochures. No, the only fishy stuff I did was not. I don't want to say it wasn't the fun kind of fishy, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to go fishing. I will tomorrow, though. Mm. There you go. And I think everybody should do whatever they can. If you don't have to work, that is an open call. Go out and go fishing. Yep. Hell yeah. Do it. Do it. You know. And we're talking. Oh, yeah. About- let's get let's get more let's get more fishermen out there than wreck boaters. That's what I'm saying. And this is the wonderful weekend for it because there's a lot of wreck boat. Like, I don't think the weather's going to be that great for, like, folks that are thinking about taking out the boat that second time of the year. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it is here. Up here. Yeah, that sucks. There's parts of the country that's not going to be the case. But I think where we are, I think uh, we're only going to see, like, highs tomorrow at, like, 70. Yeah, that's that's how it is here. But it's going to be beautiful, sunny, bright. Yeah. And seventy one. That's like, is there is there weather more perfect than that? No, no, no. not really. <laughs> it's like San Diego weather. It's, it's weird though. There's something going on right now. And while we're on the topic of weather, I think this kind of pits. Do you guys know the date that autumn begins on the calendar? Do you know? What is it like October? It's September the twenty second. Ah, that's mm. the first day of autumn. The first day of. Fall, y'all. And, um, Mm. you know, I mean, obviously, like, we know as anglers that get out there, like, you can't tell the fishing conditions by the date on the calendar. Like, things are going to occur the way that they're going to occur. But I this week I noticed something. And I don't know. Jig heads, go ahead and chime in. I I had a table at one of my trivia events. Um, These three girls, they had to do the Drinko Challenge. It was disgusting. It was uh, something we call egg water, which is the condensation below the container of hard-boiled eggs in the salad bar. (laughs) Egg water. So like salmonella water? Pretty much. No, no, no. It's it's, it's hard-boiled. It's not, it's not, you know, I mean, it's it's literally just condensation. But it's condensation that smells like farts. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> and uh, and we so we take that, a little bit of vinegar, and a little bit of, I think the other ingredient was milk. So it's really fucking gross. But these three girls, probably like like mid-20s at the latest, at the very best, they're, they're doing this drink drink, and one of them drinks it. And I was like, you guys got chasers and everything. I was like, you're chasing them with espresso martinis. Holy shit. They're like pumpkin espresso martinis. <laughs> it's fall, you know. And I'm like, okay. Were they wearing Uggs? That's what I was going to say. I, it cracks me up. My wife is the same kind of person where just because like the majority of kids have gone back to school, it's not even fucking September yet. And I get so worked up about this because I have a September birthday and my birthday is in the summer. God damn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I, I will go out with her, with, with my wife, and she'll be like, it's fall, it's sweater weather, and it's like 78, 85, yep. and she's like wearing a sweater with the Ugg boots, and I'm like, oh, God, she's just like sweating her <laughs> ass off. Though I'm like, don't force it. Fall is going to last until mid-December. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, it's going to last. Don't rush it. You know what I mean? I understand, like... I'm I'm getting off on a tangent. That's what's happening here. I'm about to it's go. It's funny off on, because yeah. my wife's fucked up, dude. She like uh like she loves the pumpkin stuff. She gets it on that, but dude, yeah. she will wear flip flops until she damn Can't. near has frostbite. Yep. Yeah. That's just how that's how she is with that. I but, respect that. I was it, yeah. you know, it's funny. We mentioned Saint Nick and Saint Nick sends me a picture of a pumpkin spice latte. He's like, I couldn't help myself. I'm a basic <laughs> bitch. What can I do? And I'm like, no, dude, don't get me wrong. I'm the same way. You know what I mean? I was told the other day that what what marks me as being old more than anything else is that I wear flip flops all the time. Really? Yeah. That's all I wear. I was told that. I was told that. I was told that not too long ago. Huh. Like 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 two days ago. And they're like, Yeah, dude, you look old because you wear flip flops everywhere. When did that happen? When why 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 do flip flops make you old? I, I always thought wearing flip flops year round was just like a Holyoke thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, just how it is. Everybody wears it. And now it's now it's changed to like it's flip flops or Crocs, one or the other. But I thought they were like I thought that was like Birkenstocks or whatever y'all wear up there. Oh, Birkenstocks. That's up in Binya's area. That's a Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, close to how much I wear to... flip flops. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got the fucking tan <laughs> oh, line. Oh that yeah, sucks. fucking light. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It happens. It's bad. Man. It's bad. <laughs> There's nothing you can do, you know? I mean, hey, no, no. you got to enjoy it. I go from like my summer shoe attire, which this year has been Crocs. Like, I just discovered the, mm. the right sizing for Crocs. And at a certain... It'll probably be end of September. It'll be just be work boots all year. Yeah. 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 I've given up on wearing sneakers. Do you I'm got the little there. headlights for them? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I'm not living my <laughs> life right. I'm really not. Nope. But I think next year is going to get kind of uh, kind of interesting. Let's 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 get dialed back into some fishy shit. How was your week? <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Bring it back in. Bring it back in. Uh, dude, my my fishy week was awesome. I uh, I get out. Well, shit. Wednesday, I was like at work. I was like, yeah, I'm not coming in tomorrow, or Friday. I'm taking it nice. off. Nice. Yeah, and they're like, okay, and uh. So, man, I went out Thursday. I uh, I hit two lakes on Thursday. I, I, I literally, I early morning send. Um, it was it was uh, it was tough fishing right in the right in the get go. It was uh, it was tough fishing. I didn't get much at the first spot, so I was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna go somewhere where I know I can." I could smash a couple at least. So mm-hmm. I friggin' I I hooked the boat back up real quick, jetted off to the other place. Um, ended up doing pretty good there. I was fine, dude. It's like uh it's weird. Um I've been fishing a lot of places that have both smallies and largemouth. I'm finding the the smallies on the shoals and the largemouth in like eight to ten, eight to twelve feet like in the grass. Oh, really? Like, okay. Yeah, like doing both that doing that, I, at least like during the day. Um Doing that, I've been smashing pretty good. So I, I did that Thursday, uh, Friday. I, I got back up super early, went and uh, went to my local spot here, and uh, just absolutely mm-hmm. annihilated them. Um, nice. ton of ton of top water, uh, ton of top water fish. Like I, I got out there like early, early first light. Um, it was awesome. It was chilly. It was uh, you know the fog coming off off the water. It was just it was cool. They they were just hitting and. Uh, but one thing I realized, so obviously we know what my favorite top water bay has been this year because I got my PB on it. Um, I don't know what it is, and this is actually part of the reason why I just made a purchase at Dark Horse. The fucking I have had so many fish shake off of that bait all of a sudden. Like, really? Yeah, dude. I so I got to change out the hooks. Like it's been pissing me off. Like huh. I got a bunch of videos of it, and I, so I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm gonna try the vectors. I was like, I'm gonna try. I know, I know they're sticky, so I, I had to look and make sure what I was getting the right size. And what size did you? What size did you get? Fours, fours, for the Mega Bass Pop X. Yeah, yep, Pop Max. That's what I, I looked it up on the Mega Bass site. They All said right, the we we fours. love you, so I'm gonna tell Josh to throw a pack of sixes in there too, just in case, or a pack, yeah, a pack of sixes in there too, just in case because. Vector hooks run a little big. Oh, okay. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> that actually makes sense. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I, I I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna put some videos on like uh TikTok and Instagram. Like it, I mm-hmm. lost so many fish. I'm just like <laughs> like on the on video, I'm just like, what is going on right now? And uh yeah, so but dude, it, it was just like it's it's wild. The smallies have been hitting the top water like yep. crazy. I haven't gotten I, I got I've gotten one largemouth on top water. Um it's been all smallies and uh the largemouth I just been pegging out of the grass. Um like and then uh I did get some on a on a rig that we'll talk about later on in the show. Um that I kinda that actually Ryan Bogley, the butcher, the kinda, kinda butcher? Kind of got me back on. Like it's one, it's you know, there's so many different, different ways to fish, um, different techniques, different baits, or whatever. Sometimes you just forget about a technique, and this was kind of like, this is one of those things. He's like, oh, I, you know, I've been doing well with this this rig, and I'm yeah. like, oh my god, like why haven't I been using that? Yep. And uh, 
so I got back into that. Um, what else? That was that was Friday. Oh my gosh! So I fished Friday, and then and then I had to take the family to the local fair. Oh, the already? kids! Oh yeah, dude, the Spencer Fair, man, it's oh. already up and running. They bet they were bugging us. I was like, <laughs> like, dude, it's one of those things I really try to get out of every year because it's it's, God, it's so like. The fair around here, the local fair, I mean, this is the fair I grew up with, whatever. It just like, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or if it's like actually getting worse every year. I like, I don't know which one it yeah. is. It's because you're getting older. Yeah. I, so it's like, yeah. The kids still have a blast every single time. And uh, so we went there. Um, I, I did see someone from the, or someone watched the show uh, grab me <laughs> nice. and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, he Dude, grabbed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just, oh. he goes, oh, Joe Brown. I'm like, oh, hey. And, and, and like, ah, oh, shit. He messaged us on fucking Facebook or Instagram or something, Bob. I can't. I'm, yep. so, I, I'm so bad. I forget his name right now. But uh, um, I was like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Like, I knew him for 30 years, you know? I'm like, and I go to Meg. I was like, I'm not sure who that was. Like, I, like, I, <laughs> you know. Hey, M- man, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. How you well, doing, you know, bro? Like, but I know, like, I'm, I'm just drawn up. I, I've been drinking. For I was going to say those fair hours. beers hit different, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, oh no, we're well, going to talk about. It. I'm drinking now. That's why I can't remember his oh, name. Okay, like, okay, I, like okay. I know the name. I, yeah. I was like, oh god, I, yeah, I know who that is. I just never met him in person. Yep. Um, listen to this bullshit. Oh god. So oh. this fair that so I got. My three kids, yep. or three of the kids. The oldest was actually working at the fair. He got a job parking cars at the fair, so he's he's actually been working his ass off. But so wild. we bring the so we bring the twins and Emma. And what do you think's the first thing I want to do to make this a little bit more tolerable? For Get a me? beer, exactly. Yeah, and Meg's the same way. So yeah, I'm like all right, let's stop here, dude. They have one beer garden, right? Oh, God. We go in there. You can't fucking leave. They, they, like, corral you with the orange fucking flood fencing and everything. You can't leave there. So I'm like, so then in my mind, I'm like, okay. I was like, this is easy. We'll go buy some (sighs) fucking tumblers somewhere. Yep. I was like, we'll keep buying them. We'll fill them up. And uh, so I go to get my, they stamp my hand. So I'm like, okay, they stamp my hand. Let me know that, like, I'm I'm drinking, like, whatever. And uh, (laughs) so I go up, I, I pound the first one. I'm like, all right, if I drink these real quick, I'll be good. Like for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll like do the round and we'll come back. Yep. Dude, I I put I, I grab it and by the way, it was actually Oak Home Brewery was there giving the beer out. Oh, from, okay. And they have this they have this pumpkin beer, which I not something I usually do. Yep. But it was fucking delicious. Right? It, was, it was so good. Yeah. But anyway, uh so I go up, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go grab another one real quick. She's like, okay, all right. And uh, I grab it, and she goes to do the stamp. I go, oh, no, I already have a stamp. She's like, oh, I know. She's like, yeah, yeah you're only allowed two. What? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm only allowed two beers? Yeah. Yeah. They do something like that. And you know what the biggest issue is? They cut their revenue out immediately, and all of those people who didn't have somebody park their car for them are going to yeah. keep a cooler in the back of their car, and then they're going to have a different kind of liability. Because so, you know what I mean? It was fucking crazy to me, dude. Because guess what? It was ten dollars a beer. So I'm like, in yeah. my mind, I'm like, for ten dollars a beer, I'd let everybody drink their fucking face off. Hell yeah! Yeah, you know what I mean. How about so, it? I was just like, so because like literally in my mind, I was going to drink that second beer. Then we were going to do a little round and I was going to find some fucking tumblers and one of these little knickknack stands and I was going to go get more so I could walk around with it. Nope. Two beers. All right. Here's the deal. So I got a fix for this. It's called denatured alcohol. All right. So what you do is you need to carry around just a tiny bit of denatured alcohol. Uh, Go have your two beers. Walk out. Walk around the block. Uh, take the denatured alcohol, rub that stamp off your hand. So that's exactly. Oh, oh, I'm, we're on the same page. So, dude, it's not like so, they're tattooing it on you. Where do you think? Where do you think I went right after? Take a wild guess. Right, right to the fucking Porta Johns, dude. Yep. I was like, they're gonna have the fucking oh. good shit to take this shit off. 
No, dude. They had the foamy stuff that didn't do a goddamn oh, thing. Oh, that's bullshit. You know what? You didn't yeah. try hard enough, Joe. You should have put I, your hand right <laughs> in the toilet with the blue water. That takes everything off. So, I know. Inc- including I know. years on your life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I was so mad. I was like, this like it, I was like, this is so fucking stupid. And then uh so I'm like so I'm like, well, I'm going to eat my face off now. So I go eat a bunch of shitty, like, food. Fair, I mean, gr- great. It was amazing. Oh, it was, yeah, like, of course. Good stuff. But, uh, and then, uh, and then the kids want to do the rides. So after we do, because, you know, it's a small town, like farm, <laughs> yep. uh, you know, agricultural community. So we had to go check out the 4-H. Oh, it kind of, it's 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 just like that. It's not. Do you a not 4- have 4-H? Oh there? yeah, we do. Yeah, oh, we do. Uh, My uh, kids uh, used to go to the 4-H camp. Yeah, yep, yep. So it, it, I actually now that I think of it, I think the 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 cattle shows are sponsored by 4-H. Now that you say it, mm-hmm. so yeah. So dude, we're going into the cattle barns because they want to see all the cows, and then like they have like the poultry and all that shit. Oh yeah. You know we got we got all kinds of stupid shit in my house, and uh, dude, I'm a I'm a I'm a uh, not a native Belchertonian, but I'm a Belchertonian through history. I'm familiar. The Belcher so, Town Fair. So you get it. I, you I get know, it. So yeah. They're all the same, dude. They're all those all small towns the are the same. same. Yep. And uh, so then the kids want to go on the rides. So I'm like, okay, there's one thing I don't do. I don't do carnival fair rides, especially because yeah. they all spin. I fucking am not good at the spinning stuff. <laughs> and one-legged Terry is setting them up and taking them down. So you dude. know they're fucking quality. Right? Dude, I'm like. <laughs> and then the kids, they just want to go what on them all. So <laughs> Emma, Emma was so Emma is five now. So she, so a couple years ago, I snuck her on to the swings. Like she wasn't tall enough. I snuck her on. Oh yeah. And like, dude, I was like, after I got off that, I was like, I might throw up I, in my head. I'm like, I might throw up. I'm not sure. Like, yep. I'm just going to kind of be cool. All that greasy fair food that you dude, just paid like we, 80 bucks for. D- dude, we get over there. Emma goes, Daddy, can we please go on those one more time? I'm like, fuck. So I do it. Oh, no. And I'm like, I'm trying to like take videos of her, and I'm just like, oh, my Yay. God. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. <gasps> Felt like shit for an hour after. Yep. And, uh, and, but then I'm watching the kids go on all the ones that I literally would die. I, yeah. I like, yep. I would be throwing up. I'd be died, be in the ICU. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how they do it. But, uh, do they still have the Gravitron at places no. like that? No, that the Big no. E they do. So I used, they do at the Big E. Yep. So they used to have it here. And, uh, they have the one that's like open air. So oh, it's weird. not the same. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't go as fast, but it like kind of tilts, which is kind of weird. But my kids went on it, and I was just like, ah, they're gonna throw up, but they didn't. And uh, so yeah, dude. It, but dude, they are so those thing fairs are so fucking expensive. Like oh, it literally, uh-huh. we spent we spent four like, almost four hundred bucks. See, okay. so you said, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't like them anymore because I'm getting old. No, you're getting wise. Yeah, okay. You know That's... exactly what's coming with it. Yep. yep. That is yep. why I don't like the boardwalk. That is why I don't like Chuck E. Cheese. That is yeah, why I don't yeah. like Kennywood. That is why I don't like Cedar <laughs> Point. Yeah. Because yeah. all you're going to do is spend a crap ton of money, have yeah. a stomach ache, and everybody's going to cry on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> Pretty yep. much, man. So, but, you know, the kids had a blast. That's all that matters. Keep um, telling they fucking loved that. it. Yeah, well, dude, and then they're like, "Hey, can we go back?" And I was like, "I was like, definitely no. not." I was like, "No," and you would have That's thought illegal. I was the biggest. I was mm-hmm. the biggest asshole on the planet. Like mm-hmm. they were pissy all day today. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Saturday, yesterday, they were pissy all day yesterday because I said no. Like you would have thought, you would have thought that I made that I fucking hit them with my belt, dude. Yeah, it's gonna come up in therapy in a couple years, dude. It's gonna yeah, come up. I was it's like, gonna come up. You know, my dad. He took us to the fair and then yeah. didn't take us back. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh yeah. my God. I was you know like, what? I'm going to schedule you for two appointments next week. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the caveat was, I was like, I, I made the mistake. I was like, I was like, I'm not, I'm not spending that. Like, it's cr- like, I'm glad you guys had a good time. I was like, I'm not fucking spending all that money again. They're like, oh, we'll use our, our money. I was like, no, no. No, this isn't the point. Like, no, I'm not it's letting not you. Th- yeah, it's it's a waste of money. Yeah, you know. I was like, it's a waste of money. And two, you're fucking ten years old. So how are you gonna get there? Yeah, like because I'm not going. <laughs> and uh, but they got better because then we went on the boat that night. And uh, there you go. So 
I brought them out on the boat. Um, that was cool. Only three of my rods got fucked up. Um, that's a, that's a plus right there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that's a sad measurement of how good a night was. <laughs> only three of my rods got fucked up, and I only and I only spent twenty minutes untangling shit. So it was 20 great. Twenty minutes. That ain't bad. That yeah. ain't bad. Out of out of the hour and a half that we're there. All right, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So no, it, they had a blast, dude. Everyone caught fit. It was tough, dude. So like I talked about how awesome the fishing had been. Dude, it like shut off yesterday for me. Like it completely shut off and I had to grind to get them on a fish. Um, you know, because there's nothing worse than when you have like Jackson's like it's not really his thing, but he like tries to do it to like fit in like mm-hmm. with like Jeremiah and I, and then Jeremiah, it's like, if he has a tough day, like he gets, if he does if he has a day, he doesn't really catch anything. He gets super frustrated. Like in my mind, I'm like, fuck, he's not going to want to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Cause we all went through that when we were young. So I'm like grinding to try to get them both on a fish. And luckily I did. Um, we all caught one. <laughs> Out of that, like, hour and a half, two hours, yep. but uh, it was a great Kept the skunk out. We kept the skunk out, um, but fuck, dude, we worked for him, and uh, it, but the cool thing was, is, like, I stayed till, like, the sun was, like, the sun was already down. It just wasn't completely dark, and I uh, I threw a fucking whopper plopper on the fucking rod uh, Jeremiah had, and I was mm-hmm. like, here you go. I was like, I guarantee if we go over this spot, you're going to catch something, and he did, thank God. But, oh, that's uh, good. Nice. Yeah, so and J- Jackson got a, a perch. Um, you know, he, he's he fucking was happy as hell, so that was good with me on a little swim bait, and I grabbed one on his hot water too. Um, but yeah, and then we dealt with some fucking dick dickheads at the boat ramp that are just taking so long. And uh, yeah, that was that was my that was my week of fishing. Um, it was awesome. I didn't go out today, kind of same reason you did, Bob. I just had shit to do around the house. <laughs> exactly. Like, it, that, yeah. that I keep that I kept putting off and uh editing some video shit like that and uh tomorrow tomorrow my dad's girlfriend wants to take the kids like to the local like lake one last time oh, all right so if she does that meg actually said if she does that let's go let's go like fish for the day like and i was like perfect <laughs> so yeah so we'll see what happens with that um but the boat's ready. It's all plugged in, ready to go. Yeah, and, gotta uh, be. Gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. I actually oh, and actually today I, I cleaned I I clean detailed the boat. Um I wanna make sure it's in pristine condition for when Zach steps in there. I got the red carpet ready. You need to, to, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, smart. I got the red carpet red carpet ready to roll out for him. Why Dude, I'm so excited. Why don't we <laughs> why don't we put a bet out there, Joe? Mm-hmm. Which of us is gonna be the first to have both Dark horse tackle owners in the boat. Ooh, yeah. Is it gonna? Are, is, are they gonna? Am I gonna? You know what I mean? Because like you might get Zach in there, but 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 are you gonna get Josh in there? Ooh. I think. Jo- I you know all I gotta do is drop some coin on that anchor Bluetooth speaker and play some of these new school hardcore bands that, uh, that Josh <laughs> is into, and and I mean which I am all about. And uh, you'd be and like the Pied Piper. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then I mean, I'm the Pied Piper. Let, let's be honest here. If I if I ha- if I keep a bottle of decent bourbon, decent bourbon, uh, in one of the back storage units, Zach is going to be there. Like it's going to be like. Like a moth to a flame, you know what I I'm mean. Just, I'm just gonna sneak him an edible and drag him by his fucking ankle on the boat. Oh, he like, won't say shit. If you sneak oh, I got, him, I got him on the edible. boat. I got him on the boat. If you sneak him an edible, <laughs> yeah, like, hey man, is this boat gonna sink? Like, did you put the plug in? Like, are we good to go? Like, are we good to go? <laughs> I know. I feel like did you did you hit a rock? Was that? A- yeah. Did you, did, you, did you feel that? We might have hit a rock, dude. Josh, we're in thirty feet of water. Yeah, but I, I, I'm pretty sure. A, like, I, I heard the cacao, dude. If like, you wanted to be the worst person in the world, slip Josh yeah. an edible and bring him fishing to Crystal Lake in Northern <laughs> Connecticut, where they claim that that uh, Friday the Thirteenth is based. Uh, yeah. yeah, and this is what you get for being and, fifteen minutes away from my house. And, and, Josh. and slip delirious fifty bucks to uh, swim around with a hockey mask on, and it'll be yeah. fucking great. It'll be fucking great. Great. Now I'll I'm gonna do it for free. Now I'm gonna get fucking anthrax in my dark horse tackle box or yes. order that I just placed. John Higgins, he does just, ship it. Mm. <laughs> fucking love it, dude. 
Oh, uh, not a bad week. I mean, it is that time of year, so like, I'm not surprised with the fair shenanigans and everything. But mm-hmm. that fucking hurts, dude. Dropping yeah. that much money on like. <sighs> Just and we're just going to do it again because we're going to go to the Big E. Because the Big E is awesome. The Big I love e the Big awful. E. That's one. That's like a way better one. How often At least do you, you go got good e. names. Yeah. At least you got good names. The fair that I went to as a kid. Oh, what was it called? <laughs> the fair. The Big Knob Fair. Oh, <laughs> Big Knob <laughs> Fair? Oh, my God. Oh. The Big Knob Fair? <laughs> Yeah, I went. I went to Big Knob Elementary. <laughs> oh my God! Was it a Catholic school? <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! <balls>. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. hold this, kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I went to. I went to Big Knob Elementary. We went to the Big Knob Fair. Um, wow! Uh, my my uh, my my I grew up on a goat farm, and uh, my mom and my dad make uh, uh, goat's milk fudge. And for like five years in a row, they won huh. best of share, best of show for their fudge at the Big Knob Fair. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> award winning fudge. At the big, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this wow! Is amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Just so you know, the Big Knob Fair is located in Beaver County. <laughs> Where else would it be located? No joke. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Pennsylvania so much. God damn it! God damn it! Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So somebody had a sense of humor. <laughs> Let me ask you this. <laughs> Is the Big Knob Fair still a thing? Yes. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, in fact, it's probably happening right now. School just started. <laughs> hey, kids, pack your shit. We're going to the Big Knob Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's going to pack everybody in that Dodge. Spend $2,500 in fuel alone <laughs> yes. to get there. <laughs> Yes, that yes. Says hey. They have different types of rides. I don't know what that means, but we're gonna give it a shot. I mean, I mean, like they got like. Do you, do you remember like the? What is it called? The Twizzler? <laughs> or the Scrambler? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twi- uh, Twizzler, Scrizzler, something like that. Yeah, and then they had the one. They had the one that was like all done up in like seventies like mod art, like <laughs> that was like. It went around in a circle, but it went up and down too. Was I don't it a, know the music. Oh, I know what you're. Ta- I know what you're talking about. It was My the asses. one that always had the music. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah. No, people die on those. I ain't going on and that. You, if you <laughs> sat on the left hand side, you were going to get crushed by yes. everybody. Yep, I, I'm very yeah. familiar. Yeah, mm-hmm. very familiar. By the way, I can do the spinny rides. The only ones. I, the only ride that I can't do upside is down. One called the pirate ship, and one called the magic carpet. Can't do this. Those the magic carpet like up and down. Knob like that, fair. Right? Yep. They just swing. <laughs> yeah. I can't do the upside down shit. You you put me on a ride that goes upside down, someone someone's gonna have their clothing ruined. <laughs> oh no, I'm good. Turn me inside out. I don't give a shit. I can oh. do upside down. I can just do the don't, shit. That, don't swing me. <laughs> wasn't that wasn't that big knob highs fucking school slogan? Turn me inside out, I'll do anything. <laughs> Uh, well, see, actually, so once you once you get out once you get out of Big Knob Elementary, you move on to Freedom. Oh God, yeah. So yeah, I went to Freedom Area Middle School in Freedom Area High School. Hey, what, what's High. the what's what's the mascot of Big Knob Elementary School? I don't think we had a mascot. If we that's did, I would have good. to. That's probably good. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's Toad it's, from, from Mario Bros. I was going to say, yeah, he'd be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> toad. Oh. <laughs> and whenever, whenever, whenever you do good, they'd give you a stamp right on your forehead. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm oh. so glad we had you on check. This is fucking priceless. It's fucking priceless. It's so good. 
<laughs> Let's just really spiral them out of control. <laughs> Oh. We should just end it right here. Like that's like, <laughs> we're not even gonna talk anything else. Oh my good lord! Oh <laughs> my good. They say that when it comes to fishing podcasts, there's a little something unique about each and every one of them. You think? I mean, holy shit! This is fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yes. Hey, well, let me let me tell you guys about the fishy shit I had go on this weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was fucking all over the place. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I didn't get out and fish at all. I did a bunch of work stuff. I actually, I'm getting into that part of the year now where, for me, business wise, I'm getting into like the busier wedding season. Um, I've got a bunch of weddings coming up, and I had the last uh, planning meeting with one of my couples. And uh, they're just absolutely awesome. Just absolutely great. So um, have this meeting. Everything was good. My plan was to go out on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was debating going out today as well and Monday. And uh, I decided to pull the plug for today because I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, Thursday gets around, right? So Wednesday, I call my dad. And I'm like, hey, what do you what do you got going on Thursday? I was like, is that work good for you? He's like, yeah. He's like, Thursday is good. What do, what do you have in mind? I was like, I need some fucking trout. I need some trout bad. So... I splashed the Lund into the Swift River, <laughs> which is, for those listening to the show that are familiar, you guys know how small of a river that is. And yeah. to me, it, it really did kind of sound kind of insane. But my dad's like, I, I've dropped the boat, my old boat in there, plenty of times. It's great. Trust me. And, he's, and he says, I think with your boat, with Spotlock, it'll be even better. So hmm. my plan was, was to go downriver as far as we could before we got to the first dam and then jump that no, and then uh, spin it around and start working our way back up. Now, I was looking for... There's four species of trout in the scavenger hunt. We got brook trout, we got browns, we got rainbows, and we got tiger trout. I was looking for any and all of them, whatever I could find there. I don't know that there's any tiger trout in the swift. There's 100% rainbows, 100% mm. brook trout, and I believe there's brown trout as well. Well, would you believe it that I caught a, a, a slew of slime darts? And I also happened to catch the biggest chain pickerel I've ever caught out of that body of water that day. It came in... Huh. At like 17 and three quarters, it was just absolutely huge. Pull and drag like a bitch. It was great. Um, my dad caught a tank of a yellow perch. Uh, it went like a tank. Just This was just a thick fish. It was about 12 inches, but it was just just belly. Like I don't know if it, it just ate a muskrat or something, but it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. holy shit. This was a lot of fucking, a lot, lot, of, lot of yellow perch. And then I went on to catch the largest largemouth I've ever caught out of there. Came in at like 16 inches. And hmm. I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. So how can a guy go to a body of water that is a world-renowned trout fishery and leave catching <laughs> the largest chain pickerel he's caught in his life there and the largest largemouth he's caught in his life there? Not a single trout wanted anything to do with any of the stuff that we were throwing at all. And we were mm -hmm. mixing it up. My dad was throwing um, live bait. He was throwing crawlers. He was also throwing inline spinners. I was throwing more like finesse swim baits, Micro yeah. jigs. Uh, I threw a, uh, a bronco blade in there. What else did I throw? I even threw. I even threw that that uh, BFS uh, glide from Dark Horse Tackle that came in uh, a few uh, months ago. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was just uh, all, what they wanted was the the micro uh, swim baits. The the the, the downsides. Yeah, of two and three yeah. inch swim baits. It was just like can't go wrong with those. Yeah, I mean it was just a home run. But it was. I mean, and when they bit, like they freaking wanted this like that that pickerel pulled a shit ton of drag it really did um and hooked perfectly it was just out of this fucking world <laughs> my dad's like holy shit that's a big fish I'm like yeah it is it's a pretty big fucking fish so um that was thursday wrap that up got home um i did so we're we're closing in on the last days of where we're gonna have the dumpster for where the big purge household purge is going on yeah so yeah. this sucker actually the day that this episode drops publicly um it'll be it'll be gone that night by that night it, it, it'll be fucking gone which thank god <laughs> so i put a bunch of items in there that needed to get out of there we have some old furniture we needed to trash some stuff like that got all that stuff all set 
And uh, this brings up Friday. So Friday, all this week, I was I was talking to my youngest daughter. I'm like, listen, I'm like, I got your mom on the boat pretty quickly after I picked up the boat. I was like, your sister's come out with me fishing already. We had a great time. She didn't catch shit, but it's all good. And I was mm-hmm. like, you, you got to come with me before school starts. Her school starts for her on Tuesday. The day that this drops is her first yeah. day back at school. First day of high school. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Makes me feel old, man. Makes me feel real old. And uh, she's like, all right, I'll go. It'll be fun. I was like, let's do this. Let's get, she loves a good road trip. I'm like, let's take a ride out to the Berkshires. I go, I'm going to bring you to my favorite lake. And we're going to fish there and we'll grab lunch on the way home and it'll just be a good time. So we launched the boat and she's like, this boat, like, it seems so big, but when you get in it, like, it's not huge. I'm like, no, no, right. it's not. Like, when it's on the trailer, it seems like just enormous. You know, parked in the backyard and everything and, and all that stuff. Um, but when you're on it, I go, you realize that real estate is kind of at a premium, you know? So we're zipping around and we're doing our thing. We're having some fun. And um, we, uh, we we were fishing this one point and uh, I'm throwing a chatterbait. The conditions are tr- screaming moving baits. I'm like, so they're going to chase. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. We'll throw this. I'm throwing around uh, a Picasso shock blade. <clears throat> it was the last one with my last green pumpkin skirt, mm-hmm. right? And I'm throwing it with uh, a freeloader on the back um, in black and blue and green pumpkin. And uh, I've got a little bit of spike it on the, on the tip of that tail, and I get hit pretty hard. And I see this smallie jump. Right, I cast just up under this tree, not too far from the bank at all. Start bringing it back. This fish bit and hit the surface, then went down and then dove into some weeds. And I tried to muscle it out of the weeds, and it broke me straight off. Like just, I was like, oh, did I fuck up my knot? Did something? I was like, I don't think I did. No, no, it just fucking broke me right off. So if anybody catches a uh, you know a, a smallmouth uh, up up the shears that's got uh, dark uh, what do you call it a, a, a Picasso shock blade with green pumpkin with a freeloader on the back that's mine. Like I just <laughs> like you saw it. Way. Like you saw it though. Oh yeah, I saw it. You you, you saw that it was a smallmouth. Oh yeah, it was a small. So you know what? Well, you know what though, like sometimes sometimes if if you hook them the right way that line can rub across those ridges on their teeth yeah that's the thing sometimes that's exactly the the deal and i'm wondering if if maybe the last time i fished with that if maybe it got some abrasion from like rocks or or, or something else in the water, and maybe I just needed to reach high, yeah, that yeah. wouldn't be the furthest thing from like reasonable, you know, way of thinking. So I, lo- mm-hmm. I lose that fish, and I'm like, we got to go back to the ramp. <laughs> My daughter's like, why? It was like bathroom break, so we zip back to the ramp. I run over there, and I'm like, I, I got to tell you. So, so Joe, when you mentioned you went to the port of John. Um, yeah, I, I was like, so at this one spot specifically, it seems like Thursdays are the days that they do all their maintenance. So like, I think the last week I was there, I was, I just had missed or I had just gotten in, in, into the Port of John like 15 minutes after they cleaned it. Okay. I think because this is a holiday weekend, they were like, fuck it. Let's wait a day. Oh my God. What a fucking different experience. <laughs> I went to the first one and in my as I was walking up and I opened it up and the first thing I said was like mm, nope shut the door <laughs> went to the other one and then headed back to the boat. We take off and we go over to like my, the, what I think is like the promised land over this one spot. So I'm following this grass line all the way across this cove and I just can't get bit anywhere. I had mm-hmm. fooled around with a couple of different presentations. I had thrown some top water too thinking maybe I could call them up with a little bit of noise. Nothing. I'm like all right we get to this one spot and there's a party over in like one of like the picnic areas. And I don't know who is who's having this, but they were playing like at first it was like a bunch of Spanish music. And then out of no, it was like a bunch of like old time, like ragtime shit, like really jazz, like all kinds of crazy stuff. I like and, it. Yeah, it was it was nuts. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. So we're fishing over at this spot, and uh I hook into a big smallie. And uh, I had tied on what was what did I catch this on? It was a spinnerbait actually. It was a knee knocker. 
Nice. Yeah, it was a knee hmm. knocker. And so I'm throwing a knee knocker around, and uh, I, I, I'm chucking this oh, basically just over the tops of the grass. And I'm bringing it across, and it just got fucking hammered. And my 14-year-old daughter... I go grab the net, kid. I go. This is your first at big at bat. I go grab the net. She's like, <laughs> okay. And in my mind, I'm like, if she loses it, I'm just gonna let it go. Like whatever. <laughs> sure. You're trying to trying to prepare yourself. <laughs> my 14 year old daughter netted that fish and got it in the boat like she if she had already net 99 previously. I was so impressed with Hell her. Hell yeah! I think I I think I know by by context clues. I think I know what happened next. You you brought the the, the you had the party going on yep. with the strange music. And oh you yeah. Got the fish in, and and then you got the fish in the net. And and then the fish went. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Absolutely, Hello, it's like you were there. It's like you were <laughs> there. Oh my god. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I, I measure the fish. I'm like, well, I'm like, this is going to help my smallie. You know, for for the entry. I'm like, this will be good. And as I measure it, I realized it is a quarter inch longer than my PB. So mm. stoked on that new. You know. In a game that's measured in quarter inches, every single one counts. And I'm stoked. I'm like, all right, cool. So we're that much closer. I'm really Dude, that's hoping- like both my marriages. Right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. You know, we have a great day. Um, we're fishing for a bit. It gets to be about like 1 or one thirty, And I'm like, listen, I'm like- Let's just go and grab lunch. We only got one in the boat, but it would definitely mattered. Let's go and fucking go for it. Let's go grab lunch. We'll call it a day. She's like, do you mind if we just take the long way, way home and go for a ride? I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So that's what we did. We stopped and we grabbed lunch. We went to a local grocer that has um, a a hot bar that they have available, like all like wings and stuff and everything. <laughs> and um, we get over to this, 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 and this is a big supermarket, and they're parking... For you know, parking with the boat is tricky. I don't like parking unless I've got a pass, a, a, like a pass through where I can go and, and grab both the front and the rear and then move. But even that can be a little bit dicey. I'd rather park on the outside if I can along the perimeter of the parking. Yeah, line. so you grab the front over. and the rear. That's called a shocker. <laughs> that is the shocker, I guess. It really is. <laughs> it really is. So <laughs> I hit the. Uh, I go and I'm, I'm 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 driving around the perimeter of the parking lot and there's like all these cars that are parked in just spots where it's just not enough space for me to be able to, be able to move. Yeah, yeah. I back this trailer into two uh, in between two cars like beautifully, and one of the owners of the car is walking up to me and he's just like uh, uh, frozen with fear like I'm gonna like I'm gonna <laughs> fucking destroy his his like late model Miata. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I just it was it was nice. So we we grabbed lunch, we drove we drove back home. Um, she even said she I was like, so what did you think? Was it was it you know she doesn't love fishing, and I was like, what do you think about being on the boat versus being on the bank? She's like, oh, I could definitely do this again. She goes, I don't think I'd go out every single day or anything like you will, but she's like, I could definitely see doing this again. And I'm like, you know what? That's a win. That's a win. That is a win. So fast forward, I go and I do trivia that night. It's a great night. Everything's awesome. I get home and I call it a night. I tell my wife I'm getting up early the next morning and I'm going out. Uh, where the hell did I go? So oh, Friday, I was out with uh, with Ace. Saturday, I was going out with Paul. All right. Now, Paul and I were going to go and hit the Connecticut River. Now, the Connecticut River is a spot that I am re- actively trying to get much more familiar with. Um, not just fishing like oxbow necessarily, but getting out yeah. and fishing the main river because of the variety of species and because of the, the absolute tanks that are out there that you can catch. Like it's yep. for Western, like the 413 area, that is a premier fishery. So I decide I'm going to go for it. So we get out there. Now, this is what's wild. So Paul meets me at my place at like 7 a.m. I told him, I'm like, I'm not like, we don't need to be there at dawn. Like we don't like whatever. I'm going to sleep in a little bit. Why don't you meet me at 7? He's like, okay, cool. So I get up. I get everything all situated. I head out, and I make my way to, um, uh, to I, I no, I, I'm, I'm waiting for my house. What the fuck am I talking about? He shows up. We load his gear up. We hit the road. We're on our way. 
everything's great. I back the, the boat in, splash the boat in, pull it over to the bank, and I'm like, all right, cool. You just wait here. I'm going to go park the truck. Paul, I, I, I pulled the boat up enough on the sand that was there that it was it was secure, you know? Paul climbs in the boat, and he goes to the back of the boat, which does what? Releases the pressure off the alpha keel. Or, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he then starts floating off. Oh. So I, I'm walking over, and I see him, and I go, uh, hey, bud, you're floating off a little bit. He's like, what? He's like tying baits on from the back of the boat. And I'm like, yeah, you're floating off. I go, dude, drop the trolling motor, and I'll get you over here. Because he wasn't that far. I'm like, the Bluetooth sure. reached. You know, I'm like, drop the trolling motor. I go, but I need you to adjust the trolling motor shaft so that it's, pull it up so it's more shallow. Yeah. And, like, it, the synapses are not working. Like, it's just not firing the right way. And I see him <laughs> struggling with it. And I go, all right, dude, you're about 25, 30 feet away from me. This remote's not going to reach that. I go, get in the captain's seat. Huh? Yeah. How the fuck else am I going to get you over here? Huh? Like, the look on his face was amazing. Now, I should say this. There was a guy that was right after we had launched, he had backed his trailer and was launching his boat. He was in his boat, like, actively, like, getting things set up and ready to just, like, like back off the trailer. He's sitting there watching all of this happen, and he can tell I'm trying my damnedest not to lose my fucking shit. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm like, all right, dude, just get get in there. I go trim the motor up a little bit. I was like, and at this point, he started to turn it up where I could see that the prop was in the water. I'm like, okay, cool. This is what I want you to do. Start the motor. He's like, all right, cool. I go, put your hand on the throttle and squeeze the grip and move it forward to engage it. And then I go, I need you to take a big corner around to this side of the dock. I go, just aim for the corner. I'll stop you. And when he got, like, close enough, I said, okay, disengage, go back into neutral. He did. Got it over there. Was like, all right, great. I said, cool. I go, hey, you just got yourself a new job. And Paul's face lights up like, yeah? And I was like, <laughs> you get to park the truck. <laughs> I tied off to the dock. I got all my stuff on. We're good to go. We took off. We, we hit it. So I had this the night before I had done a little bit of research in this area to look at where some reported catches for a particular species I was looking for were right. nearby. Now, I always take this information with a grain of salt, but I'll tell you what. When you see what I saw on this app, you pay attention. So I'm like, this is the line I want to fish. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that this contour gets fished because there are a lot of catches for what I'm looking for in between the months of the year that we're in right now, this late August, early September. It's This is an ideal place to be. So I, I want to hit that before you hit the main river. We get there, and wouldn't you know it, there's already two boats in that spot. Oh, one on the oh, far shit. end and one on the other one. And I'm like, motherfuckers. So I go around the corner. I go, we'll start over here, and then we'll work our way back around. We get over there. There's three other boats on the other side. I'm like, motherfuckers. So we decide we're just going to fish the pads until these boats clear out a little bit and then get our way around and move back, which we yeah. did. So we're fishing pads. I was throwing that new frog that's in the, uh, the newest uh, Dark Horse box, which... I forget who said it. I did a, a live on YouTube unboxing it, and somebody was like, that son of a bitch walks like you don't even believe. Holy fuck were they right. That frog walks like crazy. If I had tied a loop knot on it, I'll bet you it would have been even better. Yeah, if you... Uh Take one of the legs and cut it about a half inch shorter than the other. It also oh, but and I left it stock out of the package and it was walking. Yeah, that's what I do too. Great, you know. And I'm like, yep. um, I did get a strike on it. Fish missed it. I'm like, all right, no sweat. Um, we see this spot and I was like, you know, Paul didn't get any any strikes or anything. And it was just we're in an area close enough where if you were able to fish pads to the left of you and then fish like laydowns to the right. So I start throwing. You know, the the forecast made it sound like we we're going to have much more wind. Where we were, I guess, was a little bit more sheltered because it was like slick calm, slick calm. And I decided I would throw one of those rats from Sack Pig. Didn't get any bites there. Figured I'd change things up. Moving presentation. Let's throw the knee knocker. So I throw that. And I'm starting to realize 
that my reaction tackle tackle bag that I carry for everything, right, that's become my new day box, is more full of baits that have come through Dark Horse Tackle. So it's more full of, like, like, like small batch custom tackle than it's ever been before. And I ain't mad at that because I'll tell you what, in 2024, I have had some of the best year fishing uh, ever. Like, absolutely. Uh, unbelievable. So <laughs> I'm throwing around uh, some moving presentations. I'm like... Well, maybe, maybe the blades, maybe because it's so quiet, it's just not, this isn't the move. So I put on a jig head paddle tail, right? And I start throwing this around. I'm start, I start getting taps. I actually see a few fish flash. It's like mud back there. I see a few fish flash in this shallow water and I'm like, are these white perch? Like that's sort of the vibe I was getting. I'm like, I'm like, hmm, let's go ahead and downsize. So I grabbed my my BFS combo, which had a much smaller version exactly of what I was throwing. And same thing, like I was getting bit on the tail, like they weren't committing. So I said, I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Like, let's go, let's get it done where we needed to get it done. Um I ended up getting a good bite on a jig, uh, first cast into this one spot. And I couldn't get it to bite again. Just couldn't happen. So Paul and I are just like, you know, we fished this one area that I wanted to target. It was fruit. It was fruitless. Didn't go anywhere. I said, let's go open water. Let's just go ahead, open river, and send it. We get out there, and <laughs> we go up to this spot where I fished with another buddy of mine, my, my buddy Jimmy, and um, we start trying to put something together. Now. I'm think we have more wind going on here. So again, spinnerbait. That's what I'm throwing. I'm throwing that knee knocker, throwing it all over the place. Get my first smallie on that knee knocker. Like beautiful, awesome, home run. <laughs> Let's see if this is a pattern or if that was just a fish. Well, I did get bit again. Um, actually, I take that back. I did get bit again. Um, I took a few more casts. I got hung up and I lost that knee knocker. <laughs> That oh, I man. lost. What the uh, knee what what trailer are you throwing on that? That one I was throwing. I was actually throwing a three point three inch Kitech uh, swing impact. Mm, mm. And and I was it just I actually I made a big order for a very particular color, and I'm like I'm gonna go ahead and give this this sucker a shot. And the uh, the knee knocker I was using I forget the the color the name but it's like a green pumpkin blue, and. Uh, yeah, just fucking that swim bait does it. It does it, and it's got huge blades too. You know, it gets some attention. Or so I go and uh, I'm like, well, I go. You know, the wind starts to die off a little bit. I tie on a four inch Kitek on a quarter ounce. What was it? It was a Picasso uh, jig head, um, the tungsten jig heads with those titanium weed guards. Yep. So I'm throwing this around, and I'm getting bit, but it's – or I'm getting follows, one or the other, but they're just, like, not really committing to it. So I, I made a change, and I kept – I the one, the one reason I've talked about this in the past, about these jig heads, the nice thing is with the, the Picasso stuff is they make them – where you can get them in whatever weight for every single hook size. So I've got no, a Picasso variety. Outdoors is freaking ridiculous. Oh my god! Dude. Like they're just like, oh, you want what option? Let's do it. If you like mm -hmm. options, yeah, unbelievable. So I had one that was the same quarter ounce. It was just if I was throwing a three aught hook, this is a two aught. So I, I go and I change it, and I change my plastic, and I'm throwing the same same exact presentation, and I just start putting them in the boat. Like, I put a, a an absolute, just a, a monster bluegill. I don't know if I put this on uh, on Instagram, but an absolute just tank bluegill. Look at this. Good Lord. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely Did you beautiful. weigh it? Did you, did you weigh it? No, I didn't weigh it. I didn't weigh <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, but I got, I got, I got in, in total, I got a couple of decent smallies. Um, that could Paul, have been a pen, dude. Yeah, it might have been. I that actually was think big, it was dude. too short. I think it was probably a little oh, too okay. short. Yeah, right. I'll bet you that went maybe nine inches. Maybe. They do pins by length. They do. Yeah, catch really? and release. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the catch and keep is by weight. So if you like kept it for some reason, 
And then catch and release is done by uh, length. And those colors on that bluegill popped so much. So I put that first bluegill, uh, I put the first smallie I caught in the live well. I put that bluegill in there. I was like, hopefully he eats a bluegill and <laughs> puts on that much more weight. That'd be beautiful. Um, but I, I, I put the, the bluegill in there and their colors just pop. You put them in there under a little bit of stress like that, and man, it just, they get so unbelievably vibrant. It is nuts. So we had a good time. We decided we would uh, we'd call it. It got down to be like the last hour. I told my wife I'd be home about three. I was like, look, we can fish till two. I was like, or we can wrap it up now. It was about one o'clock and go grab lunch. Paul's like, I could always eat. I'm like, I like the way you think. We caught them. I'm happy with it. Let's go for it. So we're on our way back. Now, this is the second fucking ridiculousness that happened on this trip. Paul is, uh, you know, I to put create more room in the bottom of the, you know, in the bottom in the, in the floor of the boat. I take that passenger seat and I put it up on the top casting deck. It's because I don't really need that much space when I'm up there. And honestly, like when there's wreck boats around, I do like to sit to keep my center of gravity a little bit lower. Paul uh, will just like sit on the, the, the casting deck, or, uh, either the front or rear casting deck while I'm motoring around. And I'm like, all right, cool. That works. It's awesome. I go and I second, this is great. So he's sitting on the front casting deck looking at the rear. Of the boat, looking at the transom, I I'm going. I get us up on plane, and we're we're heading back to the ramp. Everything's good. We just come out of this one dicey area where it was really shallow. We take we take off. We're on our way. We're doing about 25 miles an hour, and I don't know. I had flashbacks of this from the Chickamauga trip. Paul, for whatever reason, turns his head and looks up to look at something. I guess I don't know what got his attention, and his hat went flying into the Connecticut River. Like, oh. fucking flying. And it reminded me of the moment where I had explained to him when we were going fishing with Caleb Bell. I said, look, I go, anytime you see Caleb strapping the rods down to the deck, I go, take your hat and flip it around backwards. You don't want to lose it. And he didn't do this this one time. It was like, oh, shit, and went to fix it and bumped my hat, my Lockwood fishing hat, and it went fucking flying. <laughs> fucking Paul lost his hat. He's like, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> so I, I flip it around. I, I turn around as quickly as I can, but safely. I start going around. I was like, grab the net. We're going to try and grab it. And it apparently sunk in that amount of time. Oh, so, yeah. That's it, crazy. Yeah. It happens quick, man. They, they sink yeah. that fast? They do. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are your hats made of? <laughs> Lead, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> That's tungsten illegal. In Massachusetts, yeah. <laughs> That's, um, I was going to say, they better be made of tungsten. <laughs> They have smaller hats, Denser. smaller hats, but they weigh the same. Yeah. So we go and uh, and it was it was pretty fun. You know, we had ourselves a good time. Um, it was uh, we had gone to uh, Pit Stop Barbecue, and uh, I ordered a brisket sandwich. Holy shit! It's like enough brisket for two people. It is out of this world. Mm. The sandwich was enormous. And like, if you're in Western Massachusetts and you're a barbecue fan, Pit Stop Barbecue in Westfield, you go. Trust me, it is. Well worth it. <laughs> so we have lunch. We pack it up. We head home. Um, I get home that night, and I tell my wife, I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about going out tomorrow. Well, one of the things that we had thrown away in this household purge was this old hutch that we had used for our, like, coffee bar and stuff. And it's just it's just taken some abuse. And, like, we would store, like... You know, that's like where we store like all of our Ziploc bags and, you know, storage containers and things like that. So we cleared all that out. We got rid of the old one. Holly ordered a new one and it was in two boxes on the porch. And I'm like, okay. I'm Wait, gonna go I need to understand what you're calling a hutch. Um, I would call it a hutch. <sighs> yeah, no, no, no. But I, I, I know because I listen, there's a. There's a lot of different definitions of the word hutch, and I need to understand what yours is because I there's like I've talked to people and there's like six different kinds of pieces of furniture that people have called a hutch. So I'm just All curious right, so as to exactly what you're talking about. Ours would you could probably also call it maybe a buffet, but what it is is basically like a cabinet unit mm -hmm. uh, with um, a, a large like countertop portion on one side of it or on, on the on the lower end of it, and then up top there's another. 
um, that's like half the depth. It's like another uh, cabinet unit that goes on top. And it's got like usually, I think this one had two cabinets, like one large one. And then the other side was like three smaller ones. So you use it for like generally like dishware and things like that. Stuff that so you, you it's like put, a china cabinet? Like you put like of. stuff in it? Yeah, you put stuff inside it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, just, just curious. Yeah. So we go and we, uh, we, we, you know, this thing is, it's, it's on the porch and, and my wife loves to buy furniture where like literally every single component is individually wrapped and you have to just fucking put everything together. So I told her, I was like, listen, when I get back from fishing on Saturday, let's work on that. She of course had gone out school shopping with my youngest and I think they had gotten their nails done or something like that. She comes home and I was like, let's get going on this. Cause I'm like, I'm going to run out of steam. I'm going to want to relax and go to sleep. She's like, let's just fucking relax. And then we'll do it later. We never did it later. So I woke up today and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fish today. I had plans to go out on Monday actually with Binya. Those plans had changed. I had told, uh, I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put that together today. She's like, you're going to put it together yourself? I'm like, yeah, it's done. <laughs> Full fucking ass production. Counted all, all, all the pieces. You know, there was only one thing wrong with this piece of furniture out of the box. One of the pieces of wood, everything was numbered. One through like 35. One of them didn't have a sticker. That's the only thing that it didn't have. So I was able to figure out what it was. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know, it was no big deal. I mean, there was only two of them, and I'm like, is this something that doubles? Are there multiples? So I was like, nope, that's got to be what it was. I was waiting for you to say, like, the whole thing caught on fire once you had it oh, together no. and realized no, no, that no. there was no sticker missing. I okay. fucking hope it did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just explodes. Hey, kids. You know, all right, everything's fine. So, hey, um, so... Given your uh, wife's pre predisposition to to uh, furniture and and what you just Garbage, described, yeah. like what is <laughs> what what is your collection of like little Allen keys look like? Oh, my collection is painful. <laughs> so I throw those fuckers away because I bought when I bought my impact driver. Yeah, I actually have bits that are Allen key bits, like and. Nice. In the truck, I have one of these little, like, it's like a Swiss Army knife of different Allen keys. It's great. Ah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yep. yes. I'm like, I, I see them, I'm like, that's adorable. And I just throw it away. I you know? can't. No? You keep them I have all? a bunch. I do. Yeah, I do I'm like They're that with tools. cables. Cables? Yeah. That's because you're 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 a you're a you're a broadcast radio TV guy. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, I have. When my wife and I got married, she's like, "Can we get rid of this box of cables?" That like, she's like, "I promise, you don't know what they go to." I was like, hey, "You watch your fucking mouth. I know where every one of those go." <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was like, like a fucking recycling bin of like RCA cables, HDMIs, like fucking you name it. Some of them still had like zip ties when they came in the package that were snipped they've never been yeah. used but i'm like i might need this right <laughs> yeah hey listen I'm listen the worst. when the next world war hits and everybody <laughs> needs allen keys or cables jigs and bigs baby yeah that's, <laughs> so yeah it's 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 bad it is bad so it was a good day it was uh you know i i did all right um i i did not catch the species <clears throat> i was looking for to really make a run at it um preliminary results for the august scavenger hunt are as follows tim behan once again took it and uh I initially was in second place, and uh, was it Saturday night? I got a message. I think it was from Kevin. I think it was. Let me double check. Let me double check. Um, yeah, for the August one, yes. Yeah, it was Kevin Mahoney. So he tied me for eight, po eight points. He tied me initially, and I had, I think... 0.01 inches over him and he had he, he had tagged me in an Instagram post and it said something to the effect of like Bobby Rose Thief I'm coming for you blah 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 and I was like yeah 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 you're in second but I go I still got you beat by inches and I was like but I'm going to concede anyway and give it up to you go ahead you got it. I think the payout is only seven anglers in this month. So the payout is like I don't even think it clears his fucking entry fee which is fucked up. 
<laughs> so he uh, he later that night left another comment and was like, oh, just upgraded my crappie. I won it fair and square. Congratulations, Kevin. Now, I have been a complete degenerate this month and am way behind on, like, verifying all the fish. I've, I started only doing that two days ago. <laughs> so I'm going to go and uh, and get through all that, and uh, and we'll see if it holds up. But, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, passing that one up to uh, to Kevin. <laughs> Biohazard Bass, and make sure to give him a follow on Instagram. Uh, yeah, it was I think it was his crappie he upgraded, but it was this month was a grind, dude. And you, to just put it out there so everybody knows, I don't know if anybody can remember earlier, like three episodes ago, I had done, I had said that my that I had fucked up on the first of the month because I had caught a couple of species I could have used. The smallmouth didn't matter. I ended up catching another one. I did not manage to catch a brown trout. I caught a brown on the first of the month that I did not enter because I completely flaked that it was even August 1st. So <laughs> if you're thinking about doing this tournament, by all means, pay attention to the calendar and make sure you're registered and make sure you've got your identifier because that brown trout was not going to do me any favors otherwise. And that would have been the difference. I would have been, I would have had nine species and that would have uh, kept me in first place, but nope. Nope. <laughs> Kevin beat me fair and square. Um, and that about does it for my fishy shit. I have uh, an outing plan tomorrow that's still kind of a big question mark. Um, I'll be going out. I'm going to edit everything. I'm going to get everything prepped for the week. So I've got nothing to worry about on Monday. I'm going to go out and send it and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully catch some bigs. We'll see how it goes. Nice. Mm. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the western Pennsylvania area <laughs> and you have a truck or are willing to attach crazy shit to the top of your vehicle. I'm 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 looking to hang out. <laughs> I'm looking to hang. I'm looking to hang. Uh Joe, do we have any headlines this week? Of course we do. I of course. love that shit. All right, so we have two stories again today. Uh, it's usually kind of what I try to do, two stories, have a few in the uh, hopper for next week just in case. But uh, first one's going to come out of West Virginia. This one comes from, actually, both my stories come from Fox News today. So two West Virginia fishing buddies break state records within hours of each other. So two fishermen working side by side set new state records with 70, within 75 minutes of each other. Uh, Jesus, they say a West Virginia fisherman set a new record only for it to be beaten in less than two hours by the man right by his side. Lyndall Marker and Dwight Priestley were spending the day together fishing for black crappie when the former pulled out a fish large enough to set the state record. Marker and his fishing buddy were out on Woodrum Lake on August 8th when the record setting catches took place. At 7.30 a.m., Marker was the first to surpass the previous state record in length. His fish measured 17.36 inches, and according to West Virginia Department of Natural Resources, that's a big crappie. No uh, kidding. That's, giant. <laughs> that's almost two foot long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the former record was set by Craig Webb, whose black crappie measured 17.32 inches. Marker's record tied with Webb's existing weight record of 2.85 pounds. Just over an hour after Marker set his new record at around 8.45 a.m., Priestley reeled in a black crappie that surpassed both the existing length and weight records the media release stated. Uh, both fishermen used live minnows to achieve their records, yep. even if Marker held his record for only a short while. These records even caught the attention of West Virginia Governor Jim Justice, who shared his congratulations on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh... I'm thrilled to celebrate this unprecedented fishing achievement. I hope these new benchmarks inspire anglers from all over to come and explore West Virginia's world-class fishing opportunities, the governor wrote. The men's fishing records were verified by West Virginia DNR's fisheries biologist, Corey Hartman. These new records are a testament to the incredible fishing opportunities at Woodrum Lake. Brett McMillan, director of WVDNR, shared in the press release. We are thrilled to celebrate these outstanding achievements by Lyndall Marker and Dwight Priestley. Their catches not only set new benchmarks, but also highlight the quality of our state fisheries. With the addition of these two new records, the WVDNR has uh, reported eight new record-breaking catches in 2024. And uh, yeah, that's it. You know what's weird? 
they didn't say what the biggest one overall was. No. Wait, so, okay. You said, what was it? 17 what? 17.36. And then they said his, right. Then they said his friend beat it, but they didn't say what what it was. Does does anybody understand what that is? All right. So like the studs in your wall are 16 inches on center. Okay. That's. Yeah. That's at least like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got a big head just, just for reference. That's like this. Like. Dude, that is insane. Yeah. Huge. How insane tall was that copy. fish? They were like circles, dude. They were just like... Burr, dude, that's insane. Enormous. That is massive. Yeah. Yeah, they they are... I mean, they are big fish. And the mouth... The, I'm looking at them right now. The mouths on them are absolutely ginormous. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. that's. I didn't even know a 17-inch crappie... I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, wow. um, I actually, I think the Massachusetts record might actually be bigger than that. And that came out of the lake a mile and a half from my house. Yeah. Um, mine's bigger. Yeah. Everybody says that. Everybody <laughs> says that. All right. West Virginia. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to tell you right now. Mountain mama. <laughs> So that's a catch and keep, catch and release. That's crazy. Holy dude. shit. So we actually know who caught this fish. Oh, we do. It was a, yeah, you know, Matt Menard. Oh, no shit. So Matt Menard has a current record 2019 out of Lake Lashaway, which yep. is about a mile and a half from my house. It came in at 18.25 inches. <laughs> that's fucking Okay, that's so that's freaking crazy. All right, so what I was getting at earlier, you have like, all right, so that's bigger than 16 inches on yeah, center. Yeah. If you own a Ryan home, which a lot of the walls are 24 inches on center, they're yeah, stuck yep. just because they're a little cheap. That's almost that big. Mm-hmm. That's almost two feet. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. insane. It's an insane fish. <sighs> I, I've got, so just, I mean, I'll just throw it out there. To just, don't be blowing up my lake, Jigs and Bigs crew, yeah. uh, fans and <laughs> listeners. You have um, to risk your life parking there in order to fucking do it. Yeah, dude, there's, there's four spots, and you literally have to risk your life doing it. Um, so I've gotten two pins out of there for crappie. Jeremiah has three pins out of there for crappie. That's uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. The cro- I mean, I haven't... If you, I haven't like targeted targeted them this year, but if you do, dude, it's fucking insane. It's insane. Um, so yeah, so there's the first story. The next one actually comes out of New England, and it gets a little bit. It's kind of fishy, kind of not. But okay. we're gonna talk about it. So this also comes from uh, Fox News. Menace to our fisheries. New England fl- flotilla unites to protest wind farm after turbine disaster. Oh. Uh, the vineyard wind project is proof that offshore wind will crush fishermen and maritime communities, one fisherman said. A uh, fleet of 25 fishing boats off the coast of Nantucket, Massachusetts, rallied together on Sunday to protest vineyard wind, an offshore wind turbine, uh, turbine project under scrutiny after a turbine blade broke off, sending shards of uh, sharp fiberglass into the ocean. Vineyard Wind is a menace to our fishermen, Jerry Lehman, uh, state CEO of the New England Fishermen's Stewardship Association. Uh, He told Fox News, Lehman joined the flotilla of New England fishermen protesting the wind project. Floating fiberglass shards remain a navigation safety risk for mariners over a month after the uh, blade disaster. We have no idea what effects the industrial litter will have on the local food chains. And uh, worse still, we have no idea whether this could happen again. Uh, fishermen understand the volatility. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try. Uh, of the North Atlantic better than anyone. Volatility. Uh, and we are not confident these turbines and blade components will survive a winter squall or a hurricane in light of July's ca- uh, catastrophe. The Vineyard Wind Project is a proof that offshore wind will crush fishermen in maritime communities. The fleet included boats that catch lobster, tuna, squid, and scallops. The fishermen were from Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Vineyard Wind did not respond to the Fox News digital request. Last month, the, Nant- uh, the Nantucket Harbor Master announced that six of the town's beaches would be temporarily closed after pieces of fiberglass washed ashore 
It said, uh, anyone walking the beach should wear footwear to protect themselves from the sharp debris. Vineyard Wind, a joint venture between foreign entities, Avangrid, and Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners, which built wind farms off the coast of Massachusetts, said on July 18th that a blade from a turbine had snapped and the power production from the turbines was stopped immediately. So, yeah, so it kind of goes on to say a little bit more. Um, I may have a little inside uh, knowledge on this. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so, right. Go ahead. so a couple of years ago, um, uh, Pittsburgh Millwrights split from the Eastern something New England whatever Atlantic mm-hmm. whatever Millwrights. Um, and uh, if it's a turbine, that's what we do. Yeah. Right. So clearly, New England, you need a little more Pittsburgh in you. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> so, I'd like to get you guys as you guys as uh, thought on this. So, you know, uh, f- for those who don't know, you know, my wife is in renewable energy. She works mm-hmm. in with renewable energy, not wind. Um, in my opinion, so with these things, there's been a. I mean, what they didn't even talk about. Look at how many. And Bobby, I know you've seen it. Being a, you, we get it in the news around here. How many? Um, you know. Uh, uh, wildlife and marine you know wildlife and whatever mm-hmm. have washed ashore in the last couple of years since this you know turbine farm has been or this wind farm has been put i'll be the first one to say i don't don't like this uh i'm a big fan of renewable energy but yeah. these things do not they cost way too much do not <laughs> produce enough uh energy to be worth it and they just they are wreak absolute havoc on uh the marine uh, wildlife out there. So that's I'm my thoughts. I'm sure on it. they. I'm. Sh- I'm absolutely sure they do. You're taking, you're taking industry, out into the ocean. Right. Um, yeah. And I don't care how good or careful you are. It is going to have some kind of effect and probably of negative yeah. on on the marine life in that area. And and quite frankly, the whole ecosystem. I mean, yep. it. You're 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 changing it. I mean this the the planet and and everything is 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 only so big. Yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. and there's not that much room and when you take something and you build of that size it's going to change things. That being said, <clears throat> this stuff is still pr- pretty much brand new. Sure. So in the grand I assume, scheme of things, yeah, definitely. I assume there is going to be a veritable shit ton of growing pains. Yeah. Yeah. Is it worth it? I don't, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah. It's, you know, (sighs) renewable energy, right? I think is, I'm, I'm a a huge proponent of renewable energy. Prepare to be canceled. I live in a community that gets a lot of its power from a hydroelectric dam, um, Mm. which is, you know, it definitely has some benefits, man. Like especially yeah. when all the also communities around me are, you know, um, you know, paying out the nose to National Grid. I get a nice little mm. break. You know, it's not so yeah. bad. Um, yeah. But anyway, like uh, renewable energy at, at the uh, on the surface, fantastic idea. What is the impact to the environment in other ways? You know, and I think that's the thing is that you get a lot of information that is preloaded with another agenda entirely and it's very hard to decipher what actually is you know because because zach on the surface like what you're saying like you're taking industry you're putting it out into the wild shit's gonna happen but you gotta look and see, like how often are these turbine or are these 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 props falling off you know or breaking or, or anything like that and yeah like I feel like with anything with life, there's always the cost of doing business, and sometimes sure. that cost isn't financial. Sometimes that cost is like a good example is the fucking sewer systems along the river, where oh yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Where it's like yeah. oh, let's just dump a bunch of fucking pollutants um, and organic material. You know, I mean, it, let's be honest, it's disgusting, sure. but a lot sure. of that's organic material. But and the other shit that goes with it, pun intended. Um, you know, it's like, is it, is it something that's worth fixing when there's no, like, 
what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like there's no counter to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it sucks because you know, and not to get on a tangent, renewable yeah. energy because that's not what we do or whatever. But yeah. uh, you know, it, it, and again, you know, my wife being in renewable energy, it, it's. This whole thing was a bunch of millionaires trying to become billionaires, you know, and like, you know, preaching and no different than soliciting it to the state or whatever. But, you know, it's it's like I said before, you know, she has a lot of knowledge in this stuff yep. is like the price that you pay to install these, especially offshore. Yeah. You're not getting the energy in the in in the kickback. There's that's no savings. anywhere yeah. worth it. It's like, yeah. is it decades. being done because people don't want to look at. Wind turbines in their exactly. backyard. Exactly, that's that, how it is around here. Because yeah. like, that's what I thought, it, you know, it's just. Uh, I'm gonna say it. We're definitely gonna. Uh, I'm gonna say. It. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. it's the same people. It's the same people that were like, oh, we're we're a sanctuary city. Like whatever. Like let, let's bring them all in, and then they and then they got sent there, and they're like, and then they saw here. one. <laughs> so so it's everything has everything has I, I and i can't remember who said it but for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction yeah, yeah yeah i really don't care how you're getting your energy there's going to be a downside of oh yes yeah. yeah it doesn't are matter you willing if it's coal, are you willing if it's nuclear, to deal with it that's exactly it there's always yep, a downside yep. yeah yep. and the better the 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 ever it, it seems to be everybody's most favorite ones to pick are the ones where Nobody knows what the downside is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's brandy new. So the only yeah. people that are going to yeah. know are, you know, our grandkids. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's uh, like, this is this is th nothing. There's nothing wrong with this one. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. listen, I don't care what it, right now. Right now I have a Zin in and uh, it's a, it's a, an amazing alternative to smoking cigarettes. I, I guarantee you give it like two more years. It's that, already starting. I'm gonna I'm gonna grow like a third arm out of my like left cheek or something. Uh, yeah. like, it, it's, I just it's coming. I just saw an article and I forget where this was. So they're like, is Zin really a safe alternative? Uh, you know, experts say that that even vaping is a healthier alternative to. And I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even a, a nicotine user at all. But like, I'm like, give it a fucking break, man. Chill the fuck Every, out. Everything's a story. Yeah. Everything's a story. And, and everybody headline, wants to spin everything. It yeah, it's just fucking insane. Uh, Unless it's cool, calm, and collected, and then nobody <laughs> gives a shit. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly it. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. There's our stories, our, our little tangent, our little rant, and uh, we'll see what I get for next week. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I Actually, I got, I got a couple in the shoot. I got a couple in the bullpen from some of our listeners. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't do them this week, so I already had these. But uh, yeah, so I will do those next week, and I will give those people a shout. So that is fucking awesome, man! I love that people yeah. are reaching out to you with like, "Hey, this would be a good one." For oh, them. dude, it's it's awesome. My it's my great. Instagram like blows up from it. It's yeah, like phenomenal. Saint Nick in the Poop Beach. Saint Nick fucking is great. I actually I think I have one. one or two in here from him, and then uh, Ale uh Alec uh, blah, 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 Plot because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got one from him. And uh, I got a couple uh, shit. Jeez, I think, ah, man, Jay Manning might have sent me one. Um, yeah, I got, I got a bunch of them in there. Nate, uh, St. Nick sent me a link to the Detroit Jazz Fest that I could listen to right here in Pittsburgh. St. Nick, there's a reason why you're a saint. He <laughs> is, man. I'm t dude, I'm looking forward to this October trip so bad. Zach, are you able to make that the Columbus I weekend? I don't. I don't know. It it depends. So so today mm -hmm. today the the turbine that I've been rehabilitating, oh. um, it saw its it saw its shadow today, uh, which means six more weeks of outage. Um, I there are certain there are certain things that I've committed to that I absolutely one hundred percent will not yeah renege on. But oh for sure, I don't know if I can extend my how many days, Joe? How many days, Joe? Uh, uh, that we're four, going up four, there? Five? Four? At least. Five? That's At four least. days. Yeah. 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 The 11th. I, I, the I, yeah. But I 14th. don't know how much I can get away with besides those four days that, that I am going to the smallmouth mecca. Oh, um, yeah. On the icon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. With, with you who the make, fuck is Joe Brown? You got to make your choices accordingly. 
Now, now yeah. remember, that weekend, Columbus weekend, that Saturday, the 12th, is the slot limit tournament. Mm-hmm. That's oh, a, so I'll be on. Uh, so week. I'll be I'll be catching Smallies. You'll be no. That'll be you're you're thinking of the uh, St. Lawrence trip. That's yeah, the week no, of the nineteenth. Two weeks, oh. before, or it's a week before. Week the afterwards. Week. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 yeah. It's the week afterwards. And um, you guys are eating bull testicles there. Yes. Yeah, so that's what boats and scrotes is all about. What we're going to do is our group that's meeting that's fishing Cayuga slot limit mm. tournament. Like all, everybody who's who's there, whoever loses, you know, well, like the winner just doesn't have to eat the bull testicles. Typically. <laughs> History would uh, would 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 dictate that like everybody dives into the bull testicles a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's just a big fucking ball party. There's balls over here. There's balls over there. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is choking yeah. balls down in this place. This one's choking balls. Like you know, oddly enough, the there are is, no bull testicles at the big knob. <laughs> this year, we're gonna have uh, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of uh, uh, female anglers actually fishing with us at Cayuga. So that's gonna be something that's very different. <laughs> Bobby, let me a- ask you this. Yeah, if somehow I figured some shit out, is there gonna be a boat park in there? Oh, dude, easily. There's slips. Oh, and we just keep them in the slip? We can keep them in the slip, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's pretty fucking sweet. So you can keep the boats for the bull testicles in the slips. I yeah, got it. Exactly. Yeah, I got it. This this could be pretty fun. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is, again, like the jig heads have access, um, and I've got Nick's info posted uh, in the Patreon group. So if you guys go on, on your Patreon and you look at the Jigs and Bigs page, and, and you'll see the big you know post for Boats and Scrotes 2, Electric Boogaloo. And uh, mm-hmm. you can get all the details there. Just send over, it, listing exactly what we've got and as spots get um taken you know and confirmed i'm gonna go and in the comments list like okay guys so this is what we're working with as of this date this campsite's been taken this queen bed has been taken something like that so you know by all means jig heads if you're if you're listening to this if you're watching this after you know we wrap it up or you're listening to this show and you're just like oh shit yeah if you're a jig head Go ahead on the Patreon app and uh, and and look at look at our profile and, and and check it out. Oh, good stuff! I think we should wrap this sucker and uh, come back for our second segment a little bit more yeah. refreshed. I think that's a good idea, guys. Don't go too far. We got much more jigs and bigs coming up after this. You trust me. Do not want to miss it. We'll see you in a bit. Don't go too far. <laughs> Jigs and Bigs wants to take a moment to say thank you to our partners for helping us continue to push the limits of our fishing adventures and bring you amazing long-form podcast content. We need to thank Dark Horse Tackle, Omnia Fishing, A Bay Lure, The Bay House, and The Ship Motel. We can't forget about Three Bells Outfitters, Torres Sunglasses, and of course, Reaction Tackle. Be sure to check the description of this podcast for any associated affiliate links or promo codes they've generously provided our listening audience. Again, we cannot thank our partners enough for their support. Please consider supporting them and supporting the show in the same process. Thanks. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one with the impeccable taste in fishing podcasts. Bobby Rose Beef here with a little call to action for all Jigs and Bigs listeners. We're opening up our hotline to you. Now you can call us to sound off about almost anything at 413-324-8519. Want to submit someone for our FTG segment? Call us at 413-324-8519. Care to maybe suggest a topic for just the tip or bait of the week? Call us at 413-324-8519. Maybe you just want to give us or anyone else a little shout out on the show. Or you want to suggest a guest for the beef seat. You guessed it. Call us at 413-324-8519. The Jigs and Bigs hotline is there for you to leave a message with us 24-7. Just call 413-324-8519. Also, you can check that number in the notes of this podcast.
perhaps play a little game called Just a Tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels. Or how out your arm right here. Okay. All right, guys. Robert Bobbert, Bobby Roast Beef here with your Just the Tip segment for this week. And it kind of springboards off of uh, a little situation that uh, I think we talked about last week in Gear of the Week. Uh, and the main thing I was talking about last week in Gear of the Week was about your swim bait selection. Okay, so I am a slut for Kytex. I'm just, it's who I am, it's, and I own it. You know what I mean? Uh, I have a handful of colors that I love. I love, I love Sungill. I love Bluegill Flash. You know, I love, there's a, there's a, a couple more that I really like, but one that I really like uh, more than anything, I wanted to stock up a bit on. And I've been throwing a lot in the um, two inch easy shiner. And I've also been throwing a bunch of different uh, swing fat impact uh, swim baits from Kytec. Um, in the summer, especially that wide wagging tail sweeping back and forth is, is really, I think sort of awesome in that warmer water, uh, you get a little bit colder and then I like to go with more of like a shimmering, like minnow type, but again, like, you know, it pays to have options. My tip is this, keep a variety on hand and look at what it is that you're throwing. I started out throwing, um, trying to go with a more subtle approach with a, and I talked about it in this week's, uh, in, in my look back at this week, I started out throwing a quarter ounce jig head with a four aught hook with a uh, 3.8, basically a four inch swim bait. And I was getting bit, but I wasn't connecting with these fish. They were following, they would bite, but they weren't really committing and getting the whole bait. I don't know necessarily what it was. And I made the assumption, or I made the decision, I should say, that I'm onto something and I have to make a change. So what I did was I kept the same exact weight of the jig head so it would have the same basically casting. And I just eliminated a half inch on that bait. Now, sure, you could go ahead and just cut a little bit off of that swim bait if you want to. Me being a little bit of a freaking bougie SOB, I like to actually have that other bait so that it keeps the same body shape. Everything is the layout the way that it should be. And I just swapped out the bait. And it was like a light switch just got flipped. They were just dialed on it. So it pays to look at... So my tip, I guess, really, if anything, is look at those follows. Look at those 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 bites where you're not connecting and they're not committing to the entire bait. And look at what you have for options to throw out there. Sometimes just making an adjustment one way or the other will be the difference between putting them in the boat and not putting them in the boat. So that oh, yeah. about does it for me. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I think that <sighs> that is extremely good advice and very accurate. So we are getting into, we're getting towards the end of the year here. And um, when you're getting into this time, basically you're getting the young of the year yeah. in the bait. So, so you've got smaller so, so it's not just a smorgasbord of of all different sizes of things that fish are eating. You're getting this major concentration of a particular size of bait mm -hmm. that the fish are going after. And if you can't match it, you can't catch you're, it. You're you're going to be screwed. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that's that's actually extremely good advice, especially for right now. A lot of times people have a lot of trouble this time of year. And it's mostly because they can't match the hatch. And, and and I'm not necessarily talking color. To me, this time of year, color is not as important as size. Yeah, I think I'll be honest with you. I think more times than not, I feel like you can get close enough with color and size will make more of an impact most of the time. Yeah. You know, I think that's it's just generally it's like, you know, bigger isn't always better, you know? Yeah, is that is that is that shadow about the same <coughs> size as the stuff I've been eating for the last two weeks? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm going after it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they follow yeah. it and they're like, oh, what's going on? They're like, oh, that guy right there holding that fishing rod? Yeah, no, I'm not, not gonna. I think I think I'm hip to that jive right now. 
So <laughs> for what it's worth, you know, go ahead and take a look. Now, let's go ahead and shift gears because this is I'm throwing something under the bus. Pun intended. <laughs> So I'm going to blow up one of the spots where I fished last week. I have to in order to tell this story. So I um, I was out on Friday up the Shears in a, uh, a little city named Pittsfield. And I was there with my youngest daughter. We're having a good time. And as the end of the day comes up, what I've been doing is anytime I'm fishing somewhere where there are docks, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll, par- I'll, I'll, I'll tie off to the dock on the outside of the ramp, l- eliminating any, like, issues with people loading or unloading but I'll take my time and I'll go ahead and I'll clean everything out of the boat. Basically what I'll do is I'll put everything away that I need to put away that's in the boat I'll put all my rods back on the sleeves everything the way that it goes and I'll place things on the edge of the boat so that when it's on the trailer I can just grab it and then put it all in the truck makes my life easier, makes everybody's life a little bit easier. So I am on the outside of the dock right here tied off at the end Setting all my stuff up, and I see a. There's a bunch of wreck boats that are out there, by the way, the, while we were out on the water, all over the place. Water skiers, tons of pontoon boats. And um, there is a. As I, I go and I'm getting my, my stuff together, I had uh, just gotten everything all set, and I was. Got onto the dock to walk up to my truck and back in to grab the boat. I am, as I'm walking over my truck, I noticed there was a small bus coming down the way at this is where I was fishing was uh, Lake Anoda. And there's this bus pulls up, not even in the first spot right next to the ramp, in front of the dock where I am, but like hanging over, like almost right at the ramp. So they pull in as I'm backing in, I back into my spot. They're unloading the bus right in front of me. The door for the bus is right in front of the ramp. And this group of people are congregating up there. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? What is going on? What are these people doing here? Well, I realized what they were doing here. They were going out on a nice cruise along the lake in somebody's pontoon boat. Because as I had untied from the ramp, right, or untied from the dock... And I was floating off from it. I start my engine. I look behind me to see if anybody's around. And I see a pontoon boat coming at me. Right? And I'm like, so what the fuck is going on? Where are they going? I have no idea. They're too far for me to be able to like yell to them and get any information. I won't hear them back. They certainly won't hear me at their age. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. Um, the van. Huh? The van. The van was from the, I think, the Pittsfield Council on Aging. (laughs) So it was a bunch of retirees on this bus coming for a ride on the boat. Now, I'm sitting there. I have no idea where it's going. Are they going... To the, into the up the up to the launch. I have no idea, so I'm waiting. Some, Neither did they. <laughs> some guy, not even the guy at the helm. Some random guy is just like waving around, like for me to move. Like that's where they're going, and I'm like, I just fucking tied off. I've been here for 10, 15 <laughs> minutes. Fuck you. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I go and I fucking, I essentially pull a three point turn. <laughs> you know, I back out. I come back around, I cut in front of them so I can get in. I go out to the lake, and then I come back in to, lo- to load my boat. These idiots just wanted to tie off on the f- spot I was at. But you know what's fucked up? The entire rest of that dock and the entire other dock were wide the fuck open. You got to be shitting me. You've got to be fucking shitting me. Luckily, when I got the boat... Um, on the on on the on the the trailer, and uh, and went to go pull out that group of people that was t- completely clueless and were like blocking the ramp. They had all congregated on the dock, so I just took right off, pulled, went up the driveway on the side of the road, set everything else up, put everything away, and then just took off. And I gave my my daughter a lesson. I was like, these are people that are just not thinking. So the Pittsfield fucking Council on Aging. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you even doing? What are you even doing? <laughs> so, yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck all of them. Every single fuck last one guy. of them. The drivers, the captain, the passengers, and fuck them. Fuck them. 
Uh, let's go ahead and shift gears then, because now we have not just one, but in fact two elements to this next segment. Okay, gearheads, it's time to talk tools. Jigs and Bigs Gear of the Week. I don't know which one of you guys wants to go first. You're so excited I about... I don't know either. I've, got, I've actually got two things. You've All got right, two about, things? Yeah, I'll go first. I'll get, I'll right. get mine out of the way. So it's kind of a gear of the week, beta of the week, a little bit a little more of a beta week, but we're going to call it gear of the week. So the old butcher, Ryan Bogley, kind of put me back on yep. a, a, a certain technique that I really hadn't touched all year that I've had really good luck um, catching good fish, especially finicky, you know, finicky fish. Um, and that is the Demiki rig. Oh, yeah. Mm. Dude. Oh, yeah. Are you are you guys familiar with the Demiki rig? Can I, I am, I am very so, familiar. So the Demiki rig is a phenomenal, phenomenal rig that is, you know, great for it's a great finesse rig. That's great for, like I said, finicky fish, fish that just kind of don't want to bite. Um Essentially, what it is is it's a it's a jig head. I, I typically use my favorite is like a one one twelfth ounce from Z Man. Oh, um, that I use, and you know it only has like a shit. I think it's a one aught hook. It's a yep. fairly small hook, and of late I've been using the uh, four inch um, Fisher Die Warbird as my bait on there. Yep, and so essentially, this isn't something that you just like cast and reel it's it's not like that the goal here is you can kind of what you want to do is you want to keep it above the fish for mm-hmm. one um you know what i do is i'll slowly bring it i'll kind of where i love this is this 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 profile is great for live scope yeah, it, it shows up really well on live scope. You're you have the if there's a fish or a group of fish or a couple of fish that you really want to target, um, the key is ensure that you keep this bait above them, and so I just kind of you you know I throw it out there. I keep the bait above them. I get it to where I know they are, and then I just start shaking a little bit. I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll dead stick it, kind of let it go down. I, I you know I start shaking it some more. And typically they have, they just cannot resist it. Yeah. Um, and they typically, you know, smash it every time. Uh, the reason why I use such a light, a light um, jig head, it doesn't matter how deep the water is. If it's super deep, I might go a little bit heavier. I might go to like a 10th, but like an eighth ounce, the absolute heaviest. Um, it just gives me better ability to keep it at the exact um place in the column that i want it to and if i dead stick it for a second it, it doesn't just like you know doesn't dive drop. down to the bottom yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't yeah, yeah. just drop sense. it kind of like stays there for a second and i just have more control of the bait mm-hmm. um it's a great it's i mean if you're video game fishing uh super deep water vertically it's great for that it's super easy to, to uh, manipulate and to work that way um but even casting out, um, yeah, especially if you have live scope, it's just a super, super easy, stupid easy um, 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 bait to, to manipulate and to use. One key here. Ensure that your knot and your line is always vertical off the um, where you tie the hook on. Or I'm sorry, where you tie the line to the, the swim bait. Um, because that's where you're gonna ensure that it's always gonna be in that horizontal configuration. Yep. Sometimes you know you want to keep it horizontal. That's where you have the uh, best chance and the best uh results from manipulating. Can you, can you I need you to say that one more time. Say what one more time. The, the about the, the configuration thing. You need to ensure that the okay. knot is always perfectly vertical mm-hmm. to okay so I'm, just, like, I'm just trying to picture it dude like, i wish I, I had one all right, all right i so, take this seriously it's right, a 90 right, so, degree jig head right yeah yep yep, yep. so okay so you got 90 degrees so you want that knot sitting right on top of the circle Correct. of the line time. right right at 90 right okay. at the 90 um gotcha and going completely vertical only that's gotcha. you, you always want to change it and it, you it's gonna move. You always want to make sure before each cast that's vertical because it's just uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 a bait that your your profile can get a little screwed up 
if you don't if you're if you're not no, that makes just, that makes yeah. total sense dude i just yep. wanted to make sure that i was picturing yeah, 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 it correctly yeah, yeah. Yep, yep and for those people that are gonna listen to this it would be I, I i was i wanted them to make sure that they pictured it correctly because i thought i knew what you were talking about but yeah like, it's it's tough to explain it's tough to explain but i think when people tie it and they say like oh this this is exactly what he meant yeah um, you just need that shit stacked exactly exactly yep yeah. so yeah that's it that that's mine super easy um a couple other baits I use, I'll use a Z-Man Jerk Shad, and I saw a couple baits on Dark Horse Tackle that I just grabbed I want to try, so... I did. You actually got a little bit of a smorgasbord. I did. Yeah. I did. There's a there's a few things on there I wanted to hey, see. Hey, anytime, anytime you want to go crazy, man, you just go crazy. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so... And by for, the way, anybody that is... Any any of you guys that are watching this right now, you're obviously jig heads. Um if you make a purchase on Dark Horse Tackle right now, uh, whatever your purchase is, whether it be $5, whether it be $500, I will send you a gift card to match it by 20%. So just saying. I love that. I love Hell that. Hell yeah. Where is that? Hmm. That's a good thing about Dark Horse Tackle, everybody. I, I, I've seen um, a lot of these baits, especially... Especially the Joshies, I absolutely love those things. I was mm-hmm. telling Bob before you, dude, aren't they on, sick? That I, I, I finally. So I know I got a pack or two somewhere, and they got like lost between when I was taking everything mm. out of the Skeeter and putting it in the Icon. So I was, so I don't have any on my boat right now. So there is like, something more. about those Joshies that I have noticed in a few other baits that I own. Mm-hmm. And they're completely different baits. They're all soft plastics, but they're completely different baits. And what I have noticed is this. Um, and I, I guess you could add this to whatever, gear, bait, tip, whatever. But if you have a bait that the rear end action mm-hmm. makes the shoulders shake a little bit, you've got a, an amazing bait on the end of your line. Yeah, I agree. There is something about when the shoulders on a bait shake just a little bit it i i i can't explain it i don't know why it works but Mm -hmm. it when the tail action imparts action on the front of the bait where where i catch fish it's funny you say that because where i loved the joshies was it had a very similar swim action to the mag draft like when you actually have the speed of the mag yeah, draft dialed right. in, yeah, which it which is a whole nother fucking thing to figure out, you know. Um, that's why I like the Joshies because they have that. Just like you said, that's a great way to put it. They yep. just had that same swimming action. That I just love. CFO just told me that I can't shake my shoulders. I look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be stopped, and <laughs> you won't be stopped. Yep. That's what I'm saying. No, I I do find that I think that the Joshies are an ideal like almost like a middle ground because like there are now I know like with like the Largo Shad right. <laughs> I know with the Largo Shad you have an option like there's a little like like little plastic tab that you can remove to get more action out of the tail or less, which is kind of unique. Um, but there, for the most part, like when that's there, that's pretty tight, like wiggle, like body roll. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Then you've got like your Kytec, you know, style, yep. like fat impact, yep, um, yep, yep. swinging tail action. And then like the Joshies are kind of like right in that middle ground. It's like a yeah. great sort of position to be. Yep. So like you can They're get a little at- bit, the plastic's yep. like a little bit, a little, it's a little bit denser. Yes. Oh, for sure. Especially yeah, in that yeah. main body section. Yep. yep. Yeah. A hundred percent. So like the so like when there's action, when there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting messages from my CFO, uh, Bobby. You were just congratulated on 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 avoiding doing the shoulder dance. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, um, no. But when that when that when that plastic is denser. Yeah. Um, and it, it's the chemistry of the plastic. So when the plastic is denser, anything that happens on the back end is it, it's good. That action is going to be imparted more on the front end. Yes. 
and 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 I, I, I just don't know. And it, it's not for every technique, but a lot of times mm-hmm. when that happens, man, boy, it just works. Yeah, I, I love those things. Uh, it, it, I don't know how we got on that ramp, but uh, yeah, they're just a great bait. I yeah. usually just run and gun them. That's that's how I. That's you how know I that was an them. Ohio secret for a very long time. Not no more. Mm-mm. Yeah, not no more. You know what? You know what I'm mad about though. What's that? I can't find the fucking show special. Oh yeah, no, that's a one and it's over. I, yeah. I was hoping that they're like we sold so many of them. We're, we're gonna, gonna put do them it again. Yeah, what I was know. it? What was it? It was like a. I forget what it was called. But it was basically was it musky? A perch. No, it was it, it was like called. a perch pattern, that but they called the it like before. something gill. I forget. Yeah, I forget was. the name of it. But it was yeah. like that hand painted pattern. It was fucking phenomenal. I'll find you some. I'll find you some. I, yes, please. I wouldn't be I'll, surprised if we saw. I mean, uh, I remember at the uh, the Columbus Expo just looking at the yeah. variety that they had. Like I yeah, picked yeah, up yeah. some. I picked up some Fire Tiger ones. Yep. Did you guys know they hand paint those freaking things? Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's crazy. Yeah. And so, there's something I mean, there's something coming up with Dark Horse Tackle here pretty soon um, that uh, in, in the first of the year is coming up with Dark Horse Tackle um, that it is going to make a whole hell of a lot of sense for us to become a pretty staple dealer of Big Joshies. Yeah. So, um, yeah, look out for that. That's awesome. I'm excited. I'm hell excited. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you one of my favorite trout fishing baits for BFS is the 2.75 Big Joshy on a mm. perfected ball head jig. Yep. Specifically. Yep. Like, especially this summer, oh my God. Like some yeah, of the dude. best trout bites I've ever had on oh, artificial yeah. baits. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. On yep. Yep. real. And oh, some dude. decent bass, too. You know, in spots I would not expect them. I've only ever caught one trout in my entire life. Really? Really? Yeah, one. One. It was a rainbow trout, and I caught it on a tube. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yep, yep. Completely on accident. I was totally not fishing for it. <laughs> that's how. That's how but, it is, though. I find like when yeah, you're throwing yeah. artificials, it's accidental most of the time. Very rarely, I'll be like, "Oh shit, that's how yeah, I was yeah. targeting this, and it happened." I had yeah. zero idea what to do with it. But so, what's our other uh, gear of the week that we're going to cover? Oh, it is quite honestly. The one thing I will not go into a shallow body of water without. Bobby? You want me to play that here? Yeah. No, hit it, a, man. I, a, I filmed this a while ago. Yeah, oh, I know. There's no beard. This is, this is nuts. So <laughs> this I'm, is disturbing. I'm going to tell you guys this. I'm going to, this is going to be such a mess. So the whole screen is going to show up in like infinity. And then I've got to do this. <laughs> and I'm going to extend it here. Here we go. All right, so I promised you guys a gear review. Here it is. No sound. I do not no leave sound. home without this when I'm nope. fishing in shallow water. So basically, um, what I'm showing off is something called a stick it. Basically, it's um, a manual power It's a manual pole. power pole. I don't want to now, move. for you folks that uh, you know it. own a canoe, a kayak, whatever, Stay. you can spend uh, a it holds better ton, hundreds, a hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a power pole for mm-hmm. your vessel mm-hmm. or you can spend a hundred bucks and get the stick it um that's a hundred that is bucks. what bobby is showing on the screen right now um you can get them in i think eight foot or ten foot lengths yep um it, it fits into any paddle holder and i will tell you right now it holds better than any anchor you could possibly buy. Um, when I, I've had I've had winds up to thirty five <sighs> miles an hour that can't move this thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's stuck and, in the ground. Yeah, it shouldn't. Be and it's to. it's quick and it's quick, like hmm. it's super quick. Like you're not like hand lining an anchor back in or putting an anchor out. It's just quick. It comes on uh, like they give you like a, a ten inch leash for it yep. that hooks to your boat. Um, Lake Arthur, the, the, the lake that I fish most often is, is pretty shallow. Mm -hmm. And any of you that fish shallow lakes, you know, that when the wind blows, Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it gets rough. Um, this thing, it's, it's amazing. It will literally just stop you cold where you're at Mm -hmm. and you will not move. Um, 
I, 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 I literally will not go without it. I have gotten halfway to my lake before. So probably about 25 minutes out, stopped, turned around, went back home and got it. Cause I forgot it. No, shit. super important. It is literally the power pole. For With, small without water. being automated. For small water yeah. craft. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And yes. I, it, it, it's amazing. I have seen people use this before, and I've heard from other folks in the industry. Like, they'll get these things, and they'll think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to stab it right through my scupper holes. It'll hold me right there. Don't do that. I I also agree with you. Don't yeah, do that. Don't Ask do Josh that. about that. Yeah. It doesn't don't. work. It will. It will. <laughs> It will. I mean, if it does work, great. But it will put so much undue strain on those scupper holes, and you could develop a leak. So, depending the, on for, the conditions, it's a risk that with you the, take with doing the Shoaly. It. With yep. the Shoaly, um, you're not going to have any trouble with that. I've I've watched Josh do it a lot. Yep. And I don't like to do it. I like to have it stuck out away from my boat. Just that, even even though it's only ten inches, I like to have it stuck out away from my boat a mm -hmm. little bit. But um, Josh will do that, and he loves it, and it works great in still water, um, and, and even with wind, whatever. Don't, don't do it in current. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it in current. <laughs> we, know, we, we I, I, may or may not have another video of Josh falling out but. I'm sure that you do <laughs> Zach, ha have you tried using that, that stick it with an anchor trolley no absolutely not uh, well so in my well, so, okay so I, I fish out of a crescent shoaly now yep. but um, I used to fish out of a uh, old town Sarnak mm -hmm. I think his name is um, it's, like, it's like a 16 Starl foot canoe Nick yeah. And um, what I did was is I attached two horizontal eye bolts yep. to the back and front of my canoe, and I actually made my own trolley. Ah, all right. Okay. And so what I – and it, the whole – it's, it's, it's fucking stupid, the reason why I did it. The reason why I did it is for camera angles. No. Because <laughs> – because that way I could control which way my boat was pointing, which way I was fishing, because the camera is mounted, you know, static on one end of my canoe. And so I could like pull the rope and make the the anchor point at one end of the boat or pull the rope and make it the anchor point at the other end of the boat. Yes. I I've never had an anchor trolley, so I don't know. Yeah. But I assume that's basically what they do. Yeah, I mean, the um, idea is that you could change the anchor point by moving the trolley and move around. Yeah, that's, yeah so that's basically yeah. what I created. That's yep. basically what I created, yeah. DIY. Um, and yeah, uh, worked freaking great. Hmm. It's badass. Worked perfectly. Badass. Oh, yeah. um, I don't do that with the... I don't do that with the Crescent Sholey, uh because it has like these... Uh, what do you call them? Tracks, the track mounts. Yep. So I just have two cameras now. <laughs> there you go. Make life a little bit easier. Um, speaking of, uh, go, actually, you said you had a second thing to cover too. I do have a second thing to cover. Um, I should have sent you a picture, but I caught my first muskie no uh, shit, about a month dude. ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, just a little guy, a little guy, about 24 inches. Still. Um, tiger muskie, beautiful fish. Yep. Um, but uh, at the time, I did not own a net. Oh, dude! <laughs> uh, so, I, I, and I, I, you know what I'll do? You know what I'll do, Bobby? Is I'm gonna send you this picture. I'll, okay. I'll get the video up, and I'll, I'll still shot. Uh, I'll take the frame out, and yep. I'll send it to you, and, and maybe you can you can put it on your Instagram or yeah. your TikTok or whatever you do. Um. It's this musky, this 24 inch musky, like flopping in midair with. So you got a, a musky with a mouthful of teeth. And, oh, yeah. and and I caught it on a crankbait. So you've got a musky with a oh. mouthful of teeth with a with a mouthful of treble hooks. And and like I'm behind it with a pair of pliers like like this, like trying to figure out how I'm going to do things. And yep. it's all in midair, like shaking all around like, God, sometimes don't you wish you had a net? Um, give me, hold on, two seconds. Stand by. I always say, no matter who the angler is, oh, have a net. All the time. Oh, yeah. Have a net. 
Oh, what yeah. the hell? Dude, how do you lose a net in your bedroom? Um, why do you but have anyways. a net in your bedroom? <laughs> yeah, why do you have a net in your bedroom? I literally just had it like two seconds ago. Um, anyways. I was going to make a really dark joke there and I chose not to. <laughs> I was going to go fucking into uh, the depths. Any of you that got a Dark Horse Tackle Box this month, you will see our featured small business. That's right. Which is Broken Twigs. Okay. Um, and Broken Twigs is a business founded on one of those ideas that once you see it, you're like, why did I not think of this? Yep. So what Broken Twigs does is Broken Twigs goes to all the pro hockey clubs. And I, I mean the big boys. Yeah. Um, and they get all the broken hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They then take these hockey sticks and turn them into nets. I love that. So, so yeah, that you got awesome. the hockey stick handle, which is carbon fiber. So badass, right? Strong as hell. They've got that coating on them. That, that hockey sticks have. So like as soon as you touch it, you're not going to let go of that net until you decide to let go of yeah. that net. Like yep. it, it's it, it's it's there. Um and uh they just do he does a really great job and I never carried a net before. So I got with this feature small business. I have one yeah. of these nets now and holy crap. Yeah, I'm looking like at it's got the awesome it's got the net on it that is like the treble hooks don't stick in it and it's safe for the fish. That's nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, an amazing thing to consider if you're going, they, by the way, they also float, um, which the first time That's I took huge. it out, never having a net, I literally had to chase it down like four times. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, dude that's but th awesome. those are my two tips man because sometimes yeah you will get out there and especially when you're fishing in a river where it's kind of pot luck i mean you can target a species oh, yeah. but it's very pot luck, luck. Of the draw yeah yeah right so like you don't know what the hell's coming in and um i i i that's another thing i i won't go out without it anymore no, that's smart. Mm. And, and not just for ju not just for my safety, but yeah. you know, when you're talking about a fish like a muskie, um, they're they're much more susceptible to to uh, what do they call that uh, when they die after you release delayed them? mortality. Delayed mortality. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, they're much more susceptible to that. And what what goes with that? more than anything else is by like keeping them out of the water or making them struggle longer. So the more you make them struggle, the more you keep them out of the water. They'll literally fight themselves to death. Yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Correct. So like, you know, you, you, you know, if you don't intend on eating that fish, then, you know, make it quick, yep. have the proper gear, yep. get them back in the water. That's the deal. So, I'm going to find that net. <laughs> I love, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and find that net, Zach, because so we're talking releasing fish, and mm -hmm. that, that, that sparked something for me. And we're, we're coming up on the end of the show, and I think this is the right spot to talk about this. Um, so have you guys been following this Instagram account called Bass Fishing Sucks? I have, actually. Yeah. I, um... I want to get him on the show so badly. Hell yeah. I actually I, shared a couple of his reels today. Yeah, I, I've shared a bunch of them, um, especially the Bastardomus ones. Yeah. And like yep. I feel that like, you know, I like to always say that there there's there's generally you find like the sweet spot of anything yeah. in, in between the extremes, you know, where like and and he is saying on on this platform, I say he, I have a feeling we know who this is. I do. Really? Yeah, I do. I think I think we know who this is. Um, mm -hmm. Either and, and actually, Zach being on the show is perfect. I feel like this is somebody who is either in the Dark Horse fam or a maybe even a past guest from Jigs and Bigs. I don't know. I just I feel like there's something there. I had a, a conversation recently about this account, and um, I think that lots of times, like some of the stuff that comes out is. Um, interpreted uh or left for interpretation and sometimes it gets a little bit like twisted 
I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to have Bass Fishing Sucks on this show to just talk about all this stuff. I am not a bass angler that's going to get mad about the things that he is saying. You know what I mean? Sure. I can understand there being... What did a, I miss? Who are we talking about? Oh, Zach, Bass Fishing Sucks on Instagram. Okay. All right. You so gotta check it out. This check okay. it out. I, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, and you think there's a you think you think there's a link? I think there's a link between the jigs. You think there's a link? Because you don't know who it is. It's, it's one a, of these it's things. A mystery. Yeah. I mean, dun, dun, dun. it's one of the few Instagram accounts where the mutual friends is significant enough that makes me think, you know, and I feel like they kind of get the humor. Um, there's a lot of shitting on bass fishermen, like specifically, um, like your tournament anglers and like your, your, your giant tournament anglers. And there's a lot of shitting on like the mass marketing or not marketing, but like the mass yep. production of tackle, um, that's yeah. out there. Yeah, it's, yeah. It seems to be much more of a keep it simple, stupid and a uh, uh, pro... K-I-S-S, people. Yeah. K-I-S-S. I, it's, Maybe it's Ben Milliken, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I, it's just... I mean, I'll uh, tell you one thing. Bass Fishing Sucks has it out for Bass Pro. Dude, <laughs> I, I, probably, what, 35% of their shit yeah. is... is Shitting on Bass and, Pro. Uh, and the one that's thing, because every bass angler should have it out for Bass Pro. I the, agree. Um, the, the one thing I, I literally am so disappointed every single time I walk into one, and I'm not talking about I'm I'm, I'm I listen. I don't care big business, small business. I'm not talking about anything. Yeah. But like, you go into a Bass Pro, and like, dude, like ten years, a decade ago, you'd go into a Bass Pro, and it was like walking into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Yeah. You walk into one today, and it's like a Kmart that's about to close. It's real bad. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you. So this this last time I was out in Foxboro for the Metallica concert, <coughs> we had some time to kill before we were able to get in and park. So we went in, mm -hmm. and uh, we were at the Foxboro Bass Pro, walked around a bit, and I was like, you know what? I'd like to get hands on one of these Helix units I'm looking at. Let's go and see what, what they've got. So we go walking down there, and like all of like those models – of Helix had no demo, no, like no, no display unit, or they were they just already sold that sold one, out. man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I'm like, oh shit, okay. So then I wanted to take a look at some of the uh, the uh, spinning rods, sp some Saint Croix stuff, just to kind of see what I think. Like all the specs, uh, like they're just, I don't know, it's just a mess. You're not wrong, Zach. You're not wrong. No, I'm serious. Like, yeah. it, like, and it's not just Bass Pro. So, sorry, Bass Pro. I didn't mean to single you out. It's but Cabela's you are, too. You are, you are supposed to be the 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 best. But, like, I've gone to Sportsman's <sighs> Warehouse. Um, even 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 as 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 bad as it's always been, I, I go to Dick's. Um, like, the shelves are empty. Mm. Yeah, a lot of like, times. You know what I mean? You go you go to like the hook and weight section and it's like every other column is just bare hooks. Yeah. But but you know what? Their fucking home decor, their apparel, all that shit's stocked just Shock. fine. Shock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the actual fishing stuff is fucking Yeah, good. if I want to get a, a Columbia Peruvian uh, yeah. puffy puff jacket it's it's there oh, yeah it's yep. in stock the right size or if i if or if i want to get a fucking sign that says welcome to my house with a moose on it plenty of those <laughs> plenty of those yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Well, i mean are they really selling i guess that's really yeah, yeah it could be. maybe they're keeping like, them in stock or they're not just not selling yeah, maybe, I, I honestly maybe that's think been there that, for like 15 years <laughs> yeah yeah i think that at some point like we hit the what do you call it the apex I, i'm not sure like a tipping Jump the point shark. almost i don't know yeah. but we a tipping point thank you bobby we hit the tipping point where everybody realized that it's so much better to just go online and get everything you want yeah and yeah. now the stores that have online stores as well their shelves are being emptied from online so if you walk in there there there's nothing there yeah yeah no like, there ain't shit there you're not yeah. wrong. So it's, it's why the kind hell of go mess. to the goddamn store? Um, 
What was I? Where I there was unless a, you want to jump in the tank at Bass Pro, and that's been a thing. And actually, we haven't had one of those in a minute. No, it's been a it's been a hot minute. It and got actually, old, but that ties, it got old. That ties into to exactly what my point was here. So one of the things on bass fishing sucks that comes up a lot in this, you know, like oh, Bass Pro shops is blah 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 blah, and like like they go kind of fucking hard at Johnny Morris. To yeah. be totally honest, they go fucking yeah. hard, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying it's not deserved. You know, I mean, I'm just saying that they fucking go there. Um, but I love they're just like people will go there and spend ridiculous amounts of money on overpriced crap and then buy it. And then they're just like, fuck it. I'm going to pay six dollars more and give you advertising space on my head. So like you go into Bass Pro, you always see the giant crates of the fucking Bass Pro shops hats. Let yeah. me tell you. If you see a young person, I'm going to say under 25, okay, wearing a Bass Pro Shops hat, it is an 80% chance that they do not fish. Oh, no, uh, 100%. The, the vast Why? majority of Why? those things, I don't Why? know. I think it's ironic. What happened? Yeah, I think it just became trendy. Is it it's like ironic. Carhartt? Like, because everybody wears Carhartt now? Is it like the same thing? Well, you know what's funny about because like I see so many people wearing Carhartt that have literally probably never had grease underneath their but fingers. Do you know what's funny though, Zach, about Carhartt that makes it a different animal? Is that there's Carhartt, the workwear brand that's been around forever, and then at some point Carhartt released like a streetwear brand, a fashion brand. So there's two different, like the, even their sizing is different. It's mm -hmm. fucked up. So like uh, a lot of people they get, but like. People are buying these Bass Pro Shops hats, and, like, they've never fished, you know? Mm -mm. It's just crazy. And I'm not saying this isn't a, you can't wear the, name three songs if you wear that band's T-shirt. That's not like, what I'm do saying they have do they, they, do they have like really big speakers in their cars or something? Like, did they just misread, not understand? I, Maybe it's ba bass pro. I think it's. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why they have a fish for their logo, but <laughs> it's, it's it's just one of those. Yeah, it's just one of those things, man. It's. Uh, I just it's think just I, it got popular things. on uh, with a younger group. Oh, we found the net, ladies and gentlemen. That's I found the net. That. Look at this. That's Look awesome. at this deal. So I, I am kind of looking for another net because I want to keep one on the yak and I want to keep one on the boat separate from one another. That might be the new yak net. That's a good size hoop. Dude, listen, um, that's the medium size. Yep. All right, which I highly suggest for being in a canoe Small kayak boat. situation. Yeah. Yep. Um, but he has short ones. He's got long ones. This dude also makes gaffs. Oh really? I saw that. I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was on the site just now. And and oh, if you're a Dark Horse Tackle subscriber, you have a fifteen percent off code that you that can you use. can use. Yeah. Oh shit. Yes. Yes. Because I, I I listen. Hey, these nets are quality. Yeah. So they are not the cheapest thing in the world. So I highly suggest if you want one, definitely use the code that you saw in your subscription. Yeah. Box brochure. I love that. I think I might have. Speaking to of that. the brochure. Yes. We, we're, Speaking of the brochure. Maybe, how, how did we, we gloss over celebrity? this? This whole, like, yeah. what, two hours? Yeah. How? It, who, I do you have know. one, Joe? Where is it? <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to tell you. It's embarrassing. Oh, it, it's embarrassing? It's Screw hanging you, on dude. the fridge. Like, what are you going to. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys talk amongst yourself for. <laughs> I, I, mine is hanging on the fridge from last yeah. year. And so yeah, I yeah. understand it's not embarrassing. It's, it's, no, no, it's, a, it's on the fridge. <laughs> I, I put it there. Awesome. Meg's like, you gotta put that on the fridge. I'm like, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. I, I took I took I took Emma's painting, threw it right in the trash. Of course, yeah, that's what you do. Like Emma's first painting, you're like, nope, <laughs> accomplishments. Oh, <laughs> you know dude, it, it came it came out awesome. I, I was really pumped about it. He he uh, he reached out to me and was like, "That's a phenomenal picture." And next thing you know, I'm on the fucking Here I'm on is. the card. <laughs> Hell yeah. There he is. Oh, who the I fuck is Joe it. Brown? And who the fuck is Draco? Dra he's, he's actually right here sleeping next to me, too. That's awesome. <laughs> fuck. 
dude that, that was such an awesome fish too that one was just over four uh on a frog dude like dude, great what, photo too great photo was that this yeah. year yeah yeah nice. that was that was my nice that was my last outing on the skeeter Oh, no kidding. That's right before awesome. I brought it down. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pre-icon. 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 Yeah. That was, uh, yep. We, uh, that was, that was a night. Uh, we had no kids. Meg and I grabbed some beers, the dog, and it was, it was before I got my second shepherd and we just went and kicked out. Dude, Bobby, that was the day that after. That when I did the FTG about the guy oh, when I was fishing those pads, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he started throwing the stick to his dog, yep. <laughs> like right in the pads I was fishing. I was like, worst. yeah. So that that was I caught that fish right before. That was the fish I caught, and I said I didn't catch anything else after. Yep. That's yeah. a good super, fish. super, 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 super excited to have who the fuck is Joe Brown and who the fuck is Draco <laughs> on the No Skunk Dark Horse Tackle August Box brochure. That's I, fantastic. Awesome, dude. I appreciate by the way, you guys a ton. Which, by the way, features Fisher or Die Bait Company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all falling together. <laughs> it's everything's coming <laughs> together. You know what I mean? It there's is. a there's a method to our madness. Oh which, yeah, you got those sharpshooters in that box. Chefs, dude, those things are sick, dude. Yeah. And what, hey, Joe, the, I got to ask you. Yep. What do you think about the net head that I paired it up with? I was just awesome. going to say, fucking I, perfect. I, I, Awesome. Yeah. I, I actually rigged it up. The uh, I actually have it on. Don't even care if that if it's not fucking tungsten. Don't care. It's 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 rigged up right now on a rod. And I was throwing it day before yesterday. Like when I saw that bait, I was like, this thing needs to stand up. Yep. Oh yeah. It needs to stand up. Straight up. Well, and 100%. it's just the right height to give those four little appendages enough room yeah. to fucking kind of yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. nice job. Real, real yep. nice. Thank job. you. Yeah. Thank you. We were excited about that. Uh, hey, listen, August August presented us with a ton of trouble. Um, the, the box out <laughs> it got it got to you boys just before August was over. Yeah, um, we had we had some quality issues, but uh, here's the deal: if I'm not going to tie it on the end of my line, mm -hmm. yep, I'm not sending it to you. Yeah, right. And if that means I got to be late, I'd rather <laughs> y'all be mad at me for being late than to give you something that is less than what my standards are which are pretty fucking high. That's what I'm saying. I, I I gotta say, we had a couple of listeners that had DM'd me, and this was after, because uh, you would you would message me earlier, Zach, saying like, hey, this box is going to be late this month. We got some things we got to handle. And I had a couple of listeners reach out, and I was like, just be patient. You're like, yep. oh, did you get your, your Dark Horse box yet? Yeah, mine hasn't shown up. And I'm like, no, no, no. Zach actually had reached out to me to, to give me a heads up. I was like, just be patient. And I'm sure those listeners are like, this is fucking awesome. Here's another PSA. Please check your junk mail for some yeah. reason. For some reason, you need to go into your junk mail and mark our was. emails as good yeah. so that you get them. You did um, send out an email. That's right. Yes, That's what it was. It was an email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know why it is. And, and the worst part is, is that even our, sometimes our golden ticket winners and I'm sending them like a gift card for 45 bucks and they're not getting it it's sitting in their junk mail. I, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it sucks, but I really think email is starting to become a second or third tier way of communicating, which, cause I think if nothing else, there's so much fucking advertising in email. Like, if I say the wrong word, something's going to show up advertising a product to me. You know what mm. I mean? In my email. Yeah. It's crazy. So I am I am co-owner, 50% owner of Dark Horse Tackle. Mm -hmm. And on occasion, I get an email from Dark Horse Tackle on, on, on Gmail, and it's like, this email seems suspicious. Right? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I'm yeah. like, oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Red alert! That's awesome. Red alert! Fucking it, dude. That box was that box was awesome. Yep. I, I, some, I mean, that frog was fucking phenomenal. The sharp. Oh, actually, guys. What color did you get? What color did you guys get? What color frogs? I got bone. Nice. Yeah, I, Joe? which is awesome. I got. I don't know. It's a. It's a. It had. It had the like bone uh, underbelly, which I loved. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember the color of the top. All right, so I, you I don't got like the name. It was like bull toad or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. It was, yeah, yeah. 
Um, it had a little bit of green, a little bit of brown, a little bit yep, of bone. Yep, yep. Yep. It was awesome. Yep. Um, guys, I got a, I got a little something, something. So I don't know if you've noticed, and Zach, this is going to be great for you too at some point. Um, Fisher Dies doing another release. Mm-hmm. October 19th. Ooh, this one October 19th. Tournament. Oh, mm-hmm. I, know, I know what it is. Oh, he told you about it? Yeah, I seen it. Oh, you did? Yeah. So th- yeah, I'm going to tell, tell you guys right now, this has the potential to like rock the fishing like bait community. It's <gasps> yeah, change like game changing. A game Fisher, changing Fisher built die in is forward facing sonar. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Dude, this could be. I when I'm going to be 100 percent honest. I told Taylor this. What he yeah. he texted me when he just thought about it, and I was like, and in my mind, I'm like, dude, that'd be sick. But I'm like, you know, I hang up. I'm like, I, I don't even know how that fucking how would, would it work. Be yeah, pop- yeah. It, dude, he did it. And I'm just yeah. like, wow, dude. I'm, no, Fisher Dye no Bait Company. Fisher Dye Bait Company is uh is kind of a dark horse tackle dream company. Um, yeah. they keep coming out. Uh, Taylor keeps coming out with uh, amazing proprietary baits. Mm. He is he is one of the companies out there that is. And this is something that I think a lot of people don't think about. It's the little guys that are pushing everything. Yeah. They innovation, push. really? Yes, it's innovation. They push everything. The reason why you get new and amazing stuff, yep. even if you're getting it new and amazing from the big companies, I'm telling you right now, it came from a little guy somewhere. Yeah. And you can probably get it go. first at Dark Horse Tackle. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, badass. Oh, that's dope. I, mm, yeah, now I can ass. see where the confusion of like, how would that actually even work? Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fucking innovation right there. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 fucking awesome. Yeah, I, dude, October's going to be so good. I got two oh, weddings so the first weekend of October, but the rest of that month is just, it's going to be the fishiest fall this year. The, the fishiest, fishiest fall. fucking fall. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to win the slot tourney test time. I mean, I, I try every time, but I... Dude, it's going to be great. And, and if you're able to make it up to Cayuga with us, we would fucking love to have you, man. I, dude, I will try. I will try. I need yeah. everybody to clap their hands and believe yeah. that all the turbines will continue to spin <laughs> until at least spinning. the end of October. I gotta. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try my best to get up there as well because I, yep. I have a wet. I have a wedding that weekend for a dear friend that I cannot. I oh, can't why are people this. getting married in the fall? Why? Why? Yeah. What? Why? Why? What? It, uh, what happened? What happened? Is it summer love? What turns it? into fall weddings? Is that what uh, happens? I know something. Summer love. Is da, that da, is da, that da, wedding da, on da. the Saturday or is it the Friday? Sunday. Oh, it's on the Sunday. <gasps> mm. Ooh. All right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, I might it's, I might be able to get weird. Yeah, and, yeah, it is possible. You know, yeah, come up on Friday, fish Saturday, and right. then bounce for the wedding. Yep. And be back in, yep. at home on Sunday. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. that yep. that could be possible. Yep. Huh. Yeah, I'm taking that Friday entirely off. I'm gonna just yeah travel, set up camp, get things going. I yep. want to go and pre fish a little bit, but not too much. I just more yeah. more than anything want to get eyes on the lake. And yeah. uh, and figure it out because because BRB is going hard. Last slot tournament, the boat was brand new and it was a fucking tragedy of errors. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. This time mm-hmm. it's going to be a different animal. Still no electronics, but I'll tell you what. I feel like that has made me that much better of an angler. Oh, do I, you know 100%. what I mean? I really do. I kind of like it. We we should literally in the next like few weeks just do a segment where it's like the good, bad, and the ugly yep. of electronics. Yeah. Well, actually, you saying that is the perfect fucking transition to the next thing I wanted to talk about. All so right. I have a plan for this winter. Normally, like we get into like November, like mid November, like right around Thanksgiving. That's when like the fishy stuff kind of drops off. We start transitioning over to like the holiday season. We're talking about baits, you know, new stuff that's coming out and everything. Then after the holidays, we're in the expo season. Yep. I think, and my, I I have a handful of, of terms. I'd like to make wintertime 
when we do these roundtables. And I had mentioned oh, yeah. yep. doing the electronic one a long time ago. I think that's very yeah. obvious. Yep. I want to do a shitting in the woods roundtable. I want to do a cannabis <laughs> in fishing roundtable. Okay. I want to do a handful of other ones. So listeners to the show, if you have an idea for a topic for a roundtable, please suggest them to me. Shoot me a DM on either Instagram or Facebook or uh, shoot us an email at jigsandbigs413 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear uh, from you guys and let us know. Shit, call the hotline and suggest it. You know, give mm -hmm. us a call on the hotline. However you can reach out to us, suggest a topic for a roundtable like, like I do. I'd love to get some of my fellow cannabis enthusiasts that love fishing on a live together to just talk about this stuff together. Or your fellow shitting in the woods enthusiasts? <laughs> I've already spoken to Becca about this. <laughs> She's going to be on the episode. Um, everybody, you know, who else was I talking about shitting in the woods recently? My dad and I talk about shitting in the woods all the time. All the fucking time. Because we're, we're, we're of the same mind. Like, it's, if, you, if you're, you know, uh, two is one, one is none. It <laughs> comes into play. You know what I mean? <laughs> two is one, one is none. Um, so, yeah. So, we try to go and be prepared. But, like, yeah, we're going to talk about this. Like, what's everybody's plan? How do you fucking handle it? Let's share some fucked up stories. And I will tell you, Becca Yassine has shared one of the fucking most vile fucking stories I've ever fucking heard regarding oh, shitting in the woods. And I told her, this is just this week, and I was like, girl, you need to share this on the podcast. She agreed to it. <laughs> so I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to hear, and I'd like to hear Jigs and Bigs do it. I nope. don't, I don't think anybody else could do it right, but I would like to hear a like fishing adventures episode where it is just people's fishing adventures. And I, when I say adventures, mm -hmm. I mean like straight up adventures. Cause personally I have a whole bunch and they're like, they're literally, they're like my favorite stories to tell. And I, I yeah. can't imagine I'm the only one. Oh, I, I got, yeah, I got a couple of those. You know, I think those might actually work really well as tales from the bait shop. Ooh. Sure. I think they would work yeah. really well there. You know, I've been trying to get folks to submit more stuff. Um, Lockwood himself has a couple of stories he's sitting on. Uh, he's got to wait for some fucking legal clearances like, to happen. Do you do like a time limit on those or like no. try to fit it into try to fit it into X amount of minutes or what I've actually been doing is I've been telling people type it out. Don't even don't even leave it as a voicemail because I'll type it out because I'll take that text and I'll format it and then I'm going to run it through A.I. So that the mm. AI reads it and then I'll create a production where there's music and sound effects. We had we had a couple of them. Um, the last yeah. one recently was so good involved uh, hitting the fish whistle and catching. I think it was a big muskie on yeah. like yep. one of those HH Customs Koosh uh, jigs. It was fucking Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was so yep. fucking good. And I'm like, yeah, we need we need more of that. That's like See, I've got oh. one that involves a blow up raft from Walmart and a part of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> hey All now. Right. All right. <laughs> really? Okay, okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Just I would say I would say go for it. Like do that or you can always the other thing you can do is like I think you get three minutes on the hotline. You can do it on the hotline because it'll do a yeah. transcript, and I can just copy and paste that and do the same thing. So really, any way somebody can share these stories with me, shoot me a story, and I'm more than happy to create it. And then, uh, you know, I mean, the feedback on the couple that we've had has been unbelievable. People love it. Well, and I mean, that's the thing, right? Like. All the fishing that we do and 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 all the things that we talk about that have to do with fishing, yep. I, this one thing I know is true. The stories, one yep. way or another, they live forever. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I know I know that I have told the stories in front of my sons enough times mm -hmm. that eventually they're gonna repeat those stories. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> you want to hear about this fucking crazy shit my dad did with a fucking vacuum in the middle of the woods? Yeah. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
That's not a birthmark. No. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's fucking up. And the beauty of it is, like, some of the shit, like, that people want to share, they might hesitate a little bit because they're like, Mm. some fucked up shit happened. The names are going to be left out of it. I'm not going to... You can you can leave whatever you want for your name, and I will cut it out. That's it. Plain and simple. That's why I have AI read it, you know? Somebody's... Dude, what was the one? The one with fucking Lockwood at that... And it wasn't even a fishing story. It wasn't even a fucking fishing story. The one with Lockwood where he was out on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And it was a, a group of him and... That sounds like a story all in itself. <laughs> oh my god, he was it dosing was the Wednesday people before Thanksgiving. Dude, he was dosing people with acid at this party. <laughs> Everybody's tripping <laughs> balls. There's a straight up orgy going on upstairs uh, with him, and uh, it was just such a fucking mess. I'm gonna fucking share it on my story because I made a reel with his, and it's. All of the, all those details all together. Yeah, it's it's in here somewhere. I got to just track it down. Bobby, if Jake's and Bakes gets canceled on September 1st, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is, man. You know how it is. Oh, I didn't make it a real. It was, yeah. Oh, brand new episode this week. Eh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, it was this episode. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it was I that remember episode. It. I remember it. And it was, oh, it was fucking mad. It, oh, God. <laughs> As I a sponsor it. of Jigs and Bakes, I listen to every single episode in its entirety. And I love it. Just that. in case, I got a bone to pick. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and you know what? No, Zach, I appreciate that. I really do. There's a lot of our partners that don't, don't do the same thing. And, you know, if we well, fuck something up, we want to fucking support you guys. Well, the right here's way. the deal. Like, here's the deal. I love Dark Horse Tackle. Mm-hmm. I care about Dark Horse Tackle. And if I am going to let somebody carry its name, yeah. I am going You're going to run your own sure. QC, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. As, as it should be. <laughs> as it should be, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, I have... I don't... I'm conflicted about this, but I'm going to do it anyways. All right. I don't know if, if you guys do any kind of... Do you guys do any kind of charity work like is there a charity that you guys do anything to or not as the podcast or yeah yeah as the podcast not directly like we've done we've worked with uh make fishing spots great again make massachusetts fishing spots great again before well uh we've worked with uh uh, veterans inc and i have a very uh, veterans inc yeah i like that i like that i like veterans inc maybe we could auction this item i have off I don't, I don't, I don't, and I, listen, Bobby, I don't know how, if you can make it work, you can make it work. Okay. But I see a lot of baits from a lot of very talented people. And it doesn't matter how talented you are when you're doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of baits. Yeah. Occasionally there is a mistake. Sure. Okay. What I have here in my hand is a beautiful jerk bait in the pattern called Boneyard from one Chris Mellow ship from yep. eBay. All right. If I turn it around, can the camera see it? Oh yeah. Yeah, in fact, I'm Right not- there it is. Chris has cleared one of his beard hairs. No. <laughs> no. Into this bait. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's phenomenal. So I figured that A Bay being a very popular bait to this show. Yeah. I I I I I if if there's a if there's a if the, if it could happen, if there's a market for it, if anybody's interested, I do have a jerk bait with one of Chris's beard hairs. You know what we could cleared do? right cleared right into it. We could partner that with the slot limit tournament because we're raising money. In the slot limit tournament for uh, Breast Cancer Research Foundation, we could do something with that easily. I haven't even I haven't even told Chris I found it yet. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Just, hopefully, hopefully it's a beard hair. Yeah, I hopefully it's not a public exactly hair. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> oh. oh wow! Oh, Chris, wow. 
<laughs> my CFO is currently asking me if if I've chalked that up, <laughs> if I've chalked that up to 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 one of the what what she she's asking me if I've, if I've chalked that up to one of the baits that I can't sell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's priceless. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I think it is too. I mean, we all know listen, that Chris puts himself into his work figuratively no. and literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. I, I've literally, I am sitting, I am sitting amongst hundreds of beautiful a bay jerk baits. Yep, like they are all freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah, I found one. That's amazing. <laughs> that has a beard hair cleared into it. <laughs> and it's so special. <laughs> you know what? I, I got, you know what, Joe, I'm just thinking about it right now. The 19th, yeah. that's, it's got to happen. I have been putting off, like something's always come up and I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. enough time. That weekend has got to happen. I got to go up you know and what? fish Listen, St. Lawrence. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you're going to do it for the slot limit tournament, here's what I'll do. Um, I've got five. I've got five patterns from Chris. So we've got Dirty Perch. We've got Candied Herring. We've got mm -hmm. Boneyard. Uh, we have Golden IU and Citrus Shad. Ooh. I will make a complete set. Oh, shit. Mm. Full with hooks and everything yep. else. All of them will have the hooks. One of them will have a beard hair. Yeah, one of them with that special. I like okay. That. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you got it. I you love got it. it. Fireworks and everything. <laughs> As intended. Dude, I fucking love it. Well, I would say this is a good show, man. We uh Yeah. We covered a lot. We did. We really did. Um, so let's go. We'll wrap this. Do you guys have anything you want to wrap up with before we uh we send this sucker? Nah. I not. If I did, I forgot. Yep. Fair enough. Hey, we'll we'll chalk it up to you'll have to tune in for, to next week's show. That's right. I think that's the way it works. Guys, remember, as always, our jig heads, uh, we appreciate you guys. Our jig heads get access to see us record the podcast and get the chime in in the comments and stuff. Uh, but we also are trying to do more and more and more for our jig heads to make it uh, a little bit more re you know, uh, reasonable for their subscription, their support, because this, this show does run on those subscriptions. So with that said, I want to let you guys know this, that there is currently a post on the Jigs and Bigs Patreon that is viewable only by our subscribed jig heads. Uh, that post is essentially a breakdown of everything going on with the uh, the event coming up, Boats and Scroats 2 Electric Boogaloo, which is happening the, the weekend of Columbus weekend in conjunction with the slot limit tournament on October the 12th. You're not going to want to miss this, guys. Uh, check the details of this podcast for a link to uh, enter the Slot Limit Tournament. And if you are a jig head and uh, want to come on out and, you know, it's just going to be a good quality hang fishing and having a good time with some amazing folks, we'd love to have you there. And uh, this would be a great opportunity just to get out and fish an amazing lake, too. There was a record-breaking largemouth that came out of Cayuga this past summer. Actually, yep. it might have been spring or early summer. Uh, earlier this year where yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's a good place to fish. I've, I've heard a lot about it from a lot of different people and everybody seems to really love it. So we'd love to have you there. If you're what not... Lake? A, what's that? What lake? Le what Cayuga. Lake? Cayuga. 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 Yep. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, if you're not a jig head and you're just listening to this, you're like, God, I'd really love to go and well, go to jigsandbigs.com. Click the button that says view our Patreon. Subscribe and you'll have access to it. You don't have to be a jig head that's been a jig head for months and months and months. If you want to subscribe to get access to it and you're available that weekend and you're in the Northeast or maybe you want to travel, come on out. It'll be a good time. It'll be a great hey, time. Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, Y'all have until midnight tonight. If you want to make an order for Dark Horse Tackle, I will give you a 20% gift card based on your purchase price. So what I'm going to do, Zach, is there's right now it's just the jig heads who are in there. Do you mm -hmm. want this to be open to just the jig heads or the entire listening audience? I Well, I, I kind of – listen, I love the jig heads. I love the people mm -hmm. I get to chat with, and I, I've loved that ever since I, I became a jig head, yep. which I did before I became a sponsor of the show. Um, um, I kind of want to keep it to the jig heads. All right, then what I'm now, gonna do. Now if you if you if you happen to you know, if it's a show that you happen to open up to the world, so be yeah. it. 
I'll uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up another post in Patreon with this link, uh, just the same affiliate link, so that way it's trackable and you'll know where it's coming from. And I'll put that link in the Patreon so folks can go ahead and put their stuff together. And I'll yeah. do me a favor, just write me a little blurb, and I'll put that in the post so that people understand the way it works. And that way, all the gotcha. jigheads will get access to it. And be good to go. Gotcha. Nice. And if you're listening yeah. to this and you'd like access to that same thing, subscribe and become a jig head and then boom. It's yeah, right man. There. It's, yeah, man. it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Listen, <laughs> um, I, I, so if we, you don't always get to hear, you don't always get to, you don't, you don't get to hear the, the interviews. So if you, if you want to, if yeah. you want to hear the interviews, you got to listen to the podcast. However, I'm telling you right now, watching jigs and bigs, on YouTube, being able to see Bobby, Joe Brown, and whoever their co-host is, mm -hmm. which tonight happens to be me, bat, 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 eyelashes. Um, it's absolutely worth it. And you get to you you get to like you get to know the people that are commenting and and yeah it, it, it you you get into a little community. It's it's a lot of fun. I I I really have it's it's been worth what is it? Five bucks, five bucks. Yeah, five bucks. Is that what it is? That's it. Five bucks a month. It, it's it's been worth every penny. I, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I uh, I just got a text from Real SD Outdoors, one of our past guests, and he goes, "Bobby, I need that hotline number." And he goes, "I need that hotline number." <laughs> I have an FTG. So that hotline number, while I'm thinking about it, and you guys hear it in the break, but if you have not, you're like, what is he talking about, a hotline? What is this? <laughs> the number is 413-324-8519. You guys can call that number, leave shout-outs, leave anything you want, any kind of commentary, and we may include it on the show. So go ahead, check all that stuff out. As always, that's where you can leave your FTGs. If you have a suggestion or something, by all means, leave a number. And that number, 413-324-8519. I'm going to send this over to Carter right now because he's like, I got an FTG. Oh, good stuff. I've got, a, I've, got a small, I've got a small thought from the CFO, my last text. Oh, okay. How much is that? What is your ROI? Aren't you glad you invited me? <laughs> <laughs> It's fantastic, isn't it? Get all that in. <laughs> Aren't you glad you invited me? <laughs> oh, God. Your CFO is going to love this. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this edition of Jigs and Bigs. We know our listeners are the best that are out there. We appreciate you guys so much. Uh, as always, like you've been doing, tag us in your fish picks on social media. We're more than happy to give you a like, a comment, share your stuff. I've been getting a lot better about trying to use the mentions on the Instagram story when we share to there. So this way you guys at least get a heads up that we're sharing your stuff. Uh, we love what you're doing out there, and we know that you love this show, and for whatever reason, we just we can't thank you enough for it. So as as always, don't ever forget, like we always say week in and week out, it's an ass for some